It's okay. It's going to do it. Yay! Pour your feathers nice. <laughs> so we got Tom's nose. <laughs> okay, we're going to call this meeting to order at 6 30 p.m. Can I get a roll call, please? 6 30 p.m. Mr. Bedra? Present. Mr. Bajaro? Present. Mr. Foster? Present. Mr. Fryer? Present. I am present. Mr. McLaughlin? Present. And Mr. Stump? Present. Pleasure to meet I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We will be prepared to lead, accept excellence, accept responsibility for our actions, respect ourselves, each other, and our district, stay focused on safety and learning. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Yes. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7 0. Moving on to new business, a superintendent interview. <laughs> I'd like to introduce Mrs. Amy G. Oh, oh yeah. 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 And I'm, uh, I'm going to go there. Okay. We have oh, somewhere we have here. Somewhere here. Have somewhere here. Oh, here. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that would be not nice. Hi. How are you? Good to see you again. Thank you. Here you go. I printed out hard copies of the 90 days so that way you don't have to keep looking at it online. Good to see you. Hi, you too. Thank you. Of course, I appreciate that. How are you doing? How are you? Good. Yeah. Oh, are you kidding? I'm all Yeah. How's my Beautiful, amazing, really good. Absolutely amazing. Here are some extras. If you guys want to pass these around, if you want, I'll be able to start talking to the books. Good evening. On behalf of the Board of Education, I would like to welcome Amy G. back to Jefferson Schools. I would also like to thank stakeholders who have joined us for the questions and for the questions they've submitted. I'll take just a moment to describe tonight's format. The interview is not scripted. Each board member has questions they would like to discuss with you, including some submitted by staff and community. Our conversation may take an hour or slightly longer. We have planned questions for each candidate, but expect tonight to be a conversation with uh, potential with the new leader of our schools. After we have finished with our questions, we will give you the opportunity to ask the board questions. Uh, we will welcome any closing statement you'd like to offer at that time. Peter Hanks from the Michigan Leadership Institute will keep, help keep us on a reasonable schedule. Audience members may share impressions from informal conversations or interview observations on the forum near the door. The board will consider these thoughts prior to deliberation. Mr. Hanks will collect these forms as soon as you can submit them. The task of choosing our next superintendent is the responsibility of the Board of Education as representatives of our community. We are thankful for the participation of our staff and community in this process. While we are not seeking recommendation, recommendations as to which individual should be hired, we are seeking your comments and any remaining questions you have for the candidate. And we're all ready? Are we ready? Yes, absolutely. Right. To begin the evening, we're asking each candidate to share their plan for their first 90 days as superintendent. Are you ready to share yours? Absolutely. Yeah. The floor is yours. All right, before I do that, I just wanted to thank you again um, collectively, I just said individually, but thank you so much for the opportunity and bringing me back and seeing whatever you saw in me to possibly be your next superintendent. It means a lot to me. Um, as you know, my diligence and reapplying and coming back and then also applying or emailing you in December and saying, hello, I'm here again, um, shows that my willingness and desire to be here is very strong. So I really appreciate the opportunity to bring you back. So the 90 day entry plan, um, Obviously, this is a plan of goals and activities that I will be um, going through for my first 90 days. 
um, I'm going to talk as if I would be here. Okay. And so I'm saying if I was, I'm just going to talk like I'm here I am in a minute. So obviously the first 90 days is of course listening, a ton of listening in the first 90 days. What's happening? What's working? What's working well? What do we want to keep here in the district? And what things do we want to eliminate or redo or relook at? Um, what things are struggles? What things are the elephants in the room? What do we need to work on uh, as a district? Talking to all stakeholders, not just teachers, not just administrators, not just the board, um, every person, community members, employees, and every facet of the district. Um, I have three goals. Um, it was difficult for me to choose three goals, I'm gonna be honest. Um, I was trying really hard, so one of them is extra long, and that's goal number two, because I had to combine a little bit, because I felt like more than three goals would be more unattainable. I wanted to have a focus point and have three specific goals to attain on what I found were the most important in order to be successful as superintendent. So goal number one is to ensure effective district governance through positive board superintendent relations. Oftentimes in public education, you hear discrepancies and frustrations between superintendents and their board. I'm a big relationship person. I am very transparent. I am very present. And that is something that I would expect from the board as well to make sure that there's a mutual relationship on how to move forward with what's best for kids. A student's first mindset always, while supporting, of course, staff and the employees of the district to make sure of future success. Um, obviously, we just established goals. One of the first things I would do is meet with all of you individually, because every single one of you are elected officials and you were elected for a reason from the community and you all share your unique talents and mindsets and each of you bring something different and unique to the district. I would like to get to know you individually and then obviously collectively we would have regular meetings always. Um, as I said in my first interview, we would be best friends. We are gonna be on the same team. I am very comfortable with any form of difference of opinion. This type of work in today's world and education, whether we're at Jefferson or any other school district, there are going to be times where we have difference of opinions, whether it's majority of you are in agreement with something that I bring forward as a superintendent and a couple don't. Regardless of the situation, I always, always, always welcome the why and I hope that it would be reciprocated of what we're working on and what we can do on behalf of our Jefferson students. Um, the district priorities are obviously long-term and short-term goals of what you guys think are needed. You, you are here, you've been here way longer than me and I am an open door and willing to listen and hear all of the concerns that you guys have while I have them as well. Goal number two, this is the longer one. Um, I had some combination here, um, building in both staff as well as community. Build and heal internal and external confidence through open, transparent, and consistent communication while nurturing a supportive district climate and culture for all of our employees, students, families, and community. So obviously that encompasses a lot, but if we aren't having relationships here at the district, that means there aren't relationships in the community and the both have to be together in order to make sure that we're moving in the right direction, which is forward. Um, obviously there's objectives here, so set up meetings with key district leadership. So not just administration, but also stakeholders across the district. Everybody that has something to do with all departments, transportation, custodian, admin assistant secretaries, teachers, of course, um, and hear concerns on what is happening, obviously, those relationships. I want to point out the word heal in goal number two. Um, the district, as a community member myself, I have 1,000% applied for this position, not once, but twice, because I have seen firsthand what the district has gone through. I am a healer. I want to be a part of the success of hearing everybody and moving forward because this district has beyond potential to do so. Um, it has been through a lot. All of you have been through a lot, and I feel like I would be the right candidate to make that happen based on my leadership success. Um, the last thing, obviously, there's in here number two is with the with the unions. Um, I at the meet and greet, I got to speak with people um, from our unions. That's super super important to me because that's another working relationship that fosters success. Um, I was on the negotiation teams in my district for our admin team, so I'm very familiar with that process and making sure we advocate for what's best to make sure our staff are supported because staff will not stay somewhere they don't feel appreciated. Um, and then obviously number four, the biggie, set up initial and regular meetings with the Monroe ISD to determine and advocate for the district's needs and supports. 
It's a big one. We can get into that later. Rule number three, accelerate student achievement by building up tiered levels of support, which is our MTSS process, while expanding daily classroom interventions and professional learning communities. That part is because, as I shared in my first interview, the data taking that I was able to find, um, our growth is not where it needs to be. Um, we're struggling in the classroom, and I feel that that's a number of different reasons of why. So if there was a bunch of teachers in front of me right now, they would say to me, well, we can't do these things if we don't have this, this, and this, and this. That's the problem right now in the district. The, the classrooms and the teachers don't have the supports that they need in order to foster a successful classroom. Their data is the way it is, a lot of it, because they're dealing with things that are outside of their control. So all of the research I've done and all of the networking and talking to staff, there is a huge issue with the behaviors in classrooms as well as the supports from the ISD. And that has to be mitigated, otherwise we're not gonna move forward with academic achievement. Um, dissecting data is clear. Part of the PLC process is also going over behaviors and talking about what things are happening and what things are not happening. What supports are needed. That also helps drive our budgets of what we're going to spend our money on. What do teachers need? Any type of PBIS type materials or supports for kiddos? Um, who does the FBAs and the BIPs? Who is doing the informal behavior plans to support the teachers? And we'll talk more about that later, of course. Um, and then have regularly scheduled meetings, of course, with our building admin. Our admin team are the instructional leaders in the buildings. They are absolutely the first person that the superintendent should be talking to in terms of what is the climate and culture of the building. What are the needs? They know they live it every single day. So the plan will be um, done by phases and themes, of course, um, phase one, two, and three. The different themes are based on the 30 days, 60 days, and 90 day model. Um, within 30 days, of course, are the introductions and the engagement. Engagement is going to help with, obviously, introducing myself through social media, but also present. Um, attending sports things, any events of the district guests. I just saw the rec center posted a whole bunch of things coming up that's so awesome. My own children will be there, so I'm super excited for that. Um, 60 days listening and learning. What What is happening, what is working, what is not working. Um, the last theme for phase three, of course, is assessing and communicating. So the assessing piece is gathering all the data that I would receive within my first 60 days and going over all of the things that are going well and all the things that the district has informed me and staff and community members as well as students. I plan on talking to lots of students. I got to see students today, it was fantastic. Um, and then of course the communicating piece is where we will sit down, superintendent and board talking about my findings and what things that I would love support on to move forward and what things we can tackle, especially so before the fall. Um, I kind of touched on this next slide um, for activity one is, of course, the board member meetings. I touched on scheduling them individually. Um, so take note to the, the date. Um, I know that the position is expected July 1, but it was important to me that I shared with you. Um, I am willing and able to start before that. I talked to my current district as well as, most importantly, my current staff at Hicks Elementary. Um, it was, there was a motion in the, in the room, um, but I felt if I was awarded the opportunity to be your superintendent, I want to come in now. I need to be present in the classrooms and the hallways to see what is happening right now so I know how to dissect that data in the summer when the buildings are empty. Um, I don't want to start July 1. Obviously, if you tell me that's when I have to start, of course, that's when I'll start. <laughs> but I wanted to make sure that I was upfront and honest um, my school can run, it's a well-oiled machine, um, whether I am in there or not. Um, I, my school, because of my shared leadership philosophy, I have a bunch of leaders across my building and they can run that school whether I'm present in there or not. And they're ready and they understand and respect that decision as well as the district um, to come in so I can see and give myself to Jefferson before the closing of the school year so I can see everything and hit the ground running for the summer planning. Um, phase two, of course, same thing, listening and learning, um, schedule, um, open meeting times to meet with district staff members, building visits, of course, um, May and June, engaging with parents and students and district events, um, open times, I want parents to feel comfortable coming to see me, um, all of those types of things, the meet and greets, the, the cliche things, coffee with the superintendent, whatever those, whatever we want to call it, but I am all about hosting and having people here. Um, there will be a big push for that if I am chosen, because today 
Um, noticing that a lot of the people that were here today, some of the people I know, and they're here in support of me, um, but in a district that has gone through what you guys have gone through, it was disheartening to see the room not packed with parents. Um, and I, I, I truly believe that's because we need to get the word out and have communication at a higher level, as well as a lot more transparency from superintendent on down. Um, I would have loved to have that room filled um, with lots of people. So that's something that I would push hard is getting parents in because there's a lot of parents with opinions and a lot of parents that have deserved opinions that need to be heard. Um, and then activity three, community partners. So attending the Jefferson um, Civic Organizational Meetings, of course, with Frenchtown Township, Berlin Township Board Meetings, um, Monroe ISD Board Meetings as well, and then connect and meet with the Monroe ISD Superintendent and have him come here. Phase two, um, also part two for the 60 days, um, schedule facility walkthroughs. Um, that's with directors of maintenance and athletics, transportation, food services, and of course, building principles. Um, and I had those dates, obviously you can see May, June, and August, if that needs to shift from July one on, of course, but, um, and then create a recurring um, schedule with district leadership, of course, um, as often as possible, but I'm a calendar person, it needs to be on the calendar, so we make sure that it's intentional and that it's followed through. Upon. <clears throat> and then uh, activity six is re reviewing the strategic plan. Um, every bit of superintendent and board goals have to be aligned with the strategic plan. The strategic plan, I'm a firm believer, needs to be done not just with the superintendent and the board. The people that make up the district are the people on the front lines, and those are the teachers and the admin, as well as the students and the parents. They need a voice in the strategic plan and should be much, very much so part of that process. The guiding questions that I'll use during phase two of my first 60 days are what are the top three points of pride for the Jefferson School District? What are two areas you identify as being the largest challenge facing the district? And are there areas of opportunity that the district should explore? Where would you like to where would you like to see our district in five years? And is there anything else that you would like to share? So it'll be consistency with everybody that I'm meeting with, but those are the guiding questions. So when I present the data to you and the findings after my first 60 to 90 days, it'll be consistent across the board with what the feedback is. Phase three, as I shared, it will be obviously concluding phases one and two and being able to present to you the findings as well as um, all stakeholders that are involved. Um, the last is obviously, this is a 90 day entry plan, but of course this work will continue throughout my time as superintendent. Um, a 90 day plan is something that is there to make sure that it's held true and follow through upon, of course. But that work of the relationship piece and the assessing and learning and listening is very much so a part of the process of being a superintendent. Being out in the schools, being present, being in the classrooms, hearing what people to say, going to the community events. So it is so incredibly important to me that when I come out in public, people know who I am. They should know who I am, but also they should know the work of the district, of what is happening here. The communication is key. And I put my favorite quote in here. Um, I say it all the time. I'm a coach. I was a teacher. I'm a principal. Preparation is the key to success. If we aren't prepared, there will always be chaos. Always. Preparation has to happen. And preparation is only done through relationships and having those tough, courageous conversations to move a district forward. That's it. All right. Okay. We're just going to go around uh, and bounce around a little bit. I'll start. Um, my first question for you is what measures have you used outside of test scores to measure student achievement? So, test scores are one of my nemesis. <laughs> yes. So, um, that is not a true indicator of an individual student. And actually, I tell students that in my building not to feel pressure or stressed that this does not define who you are. I'm a huge believer of that, and I can promise the majority of teachers would agree with me on that one. I think all, to be honest. Um, it's a snapshot. It gives a snapshot of where they're at based on standards, of course. But the PLC process is truly, should be, the driving force. A PLC, a functional PLC process, professional learning community, that is where grade level teachers come together and plan. It is super, super critical that a school principal, when they're going and doing observations of staff or a superintendent or a board member and going into individual classrooms, it is super critical that when somebody comes in, that they can see that teachers have planned together 
So students in Jefferson are being exposed to all of the same content that they're planning together. Why is because at the end result of district-wide testing, um, I believe we use NWEA here. Is that accurate? Okay. So NWEA is obviously district level testing um, in addition to, of course, MSTEP and my access. But the PLC informal data is what drives instruction every single day. Where are our students at right now? It tells a teacher, oh my gosh, I bombed this unit. So I'm going to use fake names. Miss Smith, if there's a teacher of three for a second grade group, let's say, and Miss Smith, her class did poorly on the math test. But Mr. Smith and the other Mrs. Smith <laughs> did very well, and their class did fantastic on the math assessment. That gives the first Miss Smith the opportunity to talk to her colleagues on what did you do different in your classroom and learn from each other. Because learning from each other is the most powerful thing you can do as educators every single day. And that also gives that confidence. And so Miss Smith, as an administrator, I allow my I go into the classroom and I have that teacher go and watch her colleagues teach those lessons to see if there's certain takeaways that they can have. Give them the opportunity to learn from one another. Informal assessment is by far one of the best ways to assess students and academics. Thank you. Are you familiar with the financial condition of our district and how would you describe it? Yes. So one of the first things that I looked at for round one interviews is the budget. Um, obviously, right now, um, I actually just met Heidi in the office um, for the first time. So one of the things I said is, you haven't spent your ESTER funds? What's happening with that? You have only, actually, I have it right here. You had $1.98 million allocated. Um, you've only spent $368,000. You still have $1.61 million to spend. It's a lot of money to spend by September 30th. So... Um, that's actually one of my questions in the closing. <laughs> What's the plan for that? Um, title dollars, um, how is that allocated? Um, one of the things that I have a question about with title at the end, of, of course, as well is, do principals have autonomy with their title budgets? And if so, what does that look like? Um, or is it only superintendent or the central office that spends the title dollars? I'm interested in knowing about that. So um, right now, I know that our fund balance is absolutely amazing. Um, super, super proud of this district for the management of that. Um, the combined fund balance is $8,196,688. Um, and the general fund is at the $4,280,011. And I had to write my notes to make sure, um, just in case the budget question came up, because that is really important to me, because being coming from a district right now that is in a $20 million budget deficit, um, due to significant oversight, that's super, super, super unfortunate. Um, I do believe Wayne Mustang will come, they will be stronger because of it and they'll work through it. Um, they have a great admin team that will get, get the district through it, but having a healthy fund balance is critical. Um, obviously, keeping a fund balance, in my opinion, obviously keeping it between 10 and 15%, 15% is on the more conservative side. So depending on where we are as a district on what expenditures that we have, um, Maybe going to 12%. I'm not sure how we feel about that, but we can talk about that later. <laughs> yes, yes. So um, when there's money to be spent, um, oftentimes our teachers and our administrators and our staff across the district in all positions, when money is sitting there, it can come across as, why aren't they considering this? Why aren't they looking at this? And that feels like a lack of support. I've been there. I've been a teacher. I've been a principal, obviously. And when there's money not spent, the first question is why. And if it's not communicated on the why or what the plan is for the budget, that people are going to fill in their own holes. And if they don't know, they're filling their own holes. It has to be communicated. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Foster. I have two questions. Uh, the first one is mine. So it's a really good one. If um if you were hired as a, our next superintendent. You had mentioned uh, team building. What would be your approach to starting building relationships uh, with our current administrators, teachers, paras, and support staff? In depth, what being able to start in May obviously puts a new head of state. Yes. So, what would be your first steps? Walk us through what you would do because our educators are obviously the most important. Absolutely. I started that today. Um, day one of being to work through the district. I did not get to see lots of teachers and students, of course, because still school was dismissed. Um, full disclosure and transparency, I was kind of bummed. I did tell Pete, I said, man, I wish I could go, you know, during the day earlier so I could have, you know, 
late eyeballs on what's happening in the buildings and get to see and meet more people, but I also didn't want to disrupt instruction. Um, but today, um, I can talk about, I got to meet some teachers at the middle school um, and got to have wonderful conversation with them about opinions and things that they're looking forward to and what things are going well and what things they would like to see improved. Um, and then the best part of my day is when we were walking Mr. Petty and I down the hallway and I heard balls being thrown and I knew that was my favorite sport, softball. <laughs> the softball girls were in the gym. So of course I went in there and Mr. Leach, Coach Leach, the, the coach, uh, I walked in and I'm not a very shy person. So I walked in, I'm like, hey coach, can I not practice? <laughs> He's like, yes, absolutely. I'm like, girls, come here for a second. So the team came over, run in, looking at me like, who the heck is this lady in this suit looking at me, talking to me, you know? So I got to know them very well. Um, they gave immediate feedback of what they would like um, to see changed. And I think it's fun to share with you that one of the strongest opinions was they would like the Jefferson food style, and the girl went like this, KFC bowls to be served at least once a week in the lunch. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I said, wait a second, you have KFC delivered here? She goes, no, it's pretend. She was like, no. She's like, the lady in the kitchen makes it. She was like, you know, like the little... She's like, you know, Mrs. G, like the round, like chicken balls, you know, they put it in a bucket with the mashed potatoes and the corn or whatever. I was like, oh, like a legit KFC bowl. She's like, yeah, that's what I said. I was like, you did say that. Okay. <laughs> I was like, noted. I got it. And then they don't like the frozen pizza here. They would like Tiffany's. Now that Tiffany's is here on Dixie, they would like Tiffany's pizza to be shipped in um, at least once a week. I said, sounds great. And the last thing was the school dances. Um, they're very upset. And I talked to the DO students at the meet and greet about how the students at the middle school are angry and they want a school dance, but I found out this evening at the meet and greet that there is a dance coming, but it's an earned dance, which I am in full agreement with. Understand. As long as the dance is happening. I think you got the softball players when they were hungry. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes. Um, so to elaborate a little bit more on that, um, I, if you haven't, if you can't tell by my energy here in front of you, I am a very known person for my energy and people skills. Um, that is what I do best. I was very glad to see that you had a meet and greet, but like I said earlier, I wish it would have been a packed house. Um, that is who I am. Put me in the center of a room, and I'm going to know everybody's name by the time I leave. Um, the reason for that May piece of me asking if I would be able to come sooner is because of that, the relationship piece. July 1, nobody's here. Um, it's going to be a lot more difficult to put plans together for me as a new superintendent coming into the district without being able to see exactly what is going on and to hear more. In one day today, in an hour and a half time, I've learned more about this district. And Mr. Petty was a wonderful help and a wonderful resource, and I want to thank you for providing him the opportunity to be the host. He was fantastic. Um, being able to familiarize myself with what is happening, um, being a part of graduation, it's huge. Um, talking to parents and finding out what is happening, that is how we foster the relationships. How will that happen? Teams. I am a firm, adamant believer in shared leadership. Why I can walk from my school right now is because of the leadership that we've shared. I have a leadership team there. The teachers here are absolutely starving for leadership. They very much so should be a part of the leadership process and opportunities here in the district. It does not mean that I just meet with all of you and we put a plan together and tell them what the plan is. That is the opposite of how you get buy-in. Buy-in is developed solely based on leadership that is shared and voices are heard. Not just by going and meeting and then taking notes and then coming back and saying, this is the plan that this we set up, but you weren't a part of that. Thank you for your information. Instead, put teams together of what are the issues right now at the district. Academic, we need a, we need a curriculum team. We need an academic team. We need, if it's PLC, MTSS, whatever it is. Athletics. Ms. Eppler, what is going on with athletics? Where is the budget? What does it look like? All of our coaches in a room together. This is a huge district for sports. And we need to absolutely dissect our data with our sports. The fact that you had 13 girls come out for your varsity softball team, like, I almost choked. I couldn't even believe that data when I heard it. So, and yes, I asked all about the athletic data here. So, relationships and teams. Coming in May affords me the opportunity to meet everybody and start the team process. If that means, and don't panic, Mr. Stone, don't panic when I say this, but if we say that staff can have the opportunity of those teams that we are able to develop, and if there's somehow, some way 
that we can possibly supplement income for people to spend some summer hours to come in and be teams for each area. I don't want to use the word deficit, it sounds so terrible, but each area of growth, that's a much better way to put it. Then we're more prepared for the fall. We're working together in the summer to develop a plan the minute those students return on the very first day of school. Staff feel better over the summer. They feel better that they're being heard and that plans are in place that will decrease staff from going elsewhere over the summer because that's when the most recruiting is happening for other districts. As a school principal, if you are on my Facebook, you will see how much I post openings in my own building. I feel like my own HR person because I'm constantly promoting what I have going on in my building. We don't and we can't afford to lose more staff at Jefferson. And the only way to diminish that is by relationships. I'm sorry that was long-winded, but no, that is a no, really no, important it was question. I like Thank it. you. Okay. No, that's perfect. Uh, this um, question that I'm asking was given to us by a community member. Okay. Um, it's no secret our enrollment has decreased over the years. If you were hired as our superintendent, what is your plan to change the perception of our school and promote the opportunities we have and increase our enrollment? Perfect. So later, I plan on bringing it up, obviously, but it's also no secret when my kids go to school, it needs to be talked about. That was my second part. Oh, perfect. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and say it before you even bring it up. So first and foremost, um, let me just say that there is a story. Um, Pete was gracious enough to tell me that if people bring up where my kids go to school because if there's a religious affiliation, obviously I was listening to your live deliberations after the first round and heard some of the questions and concern, and you need to hear me say it's warranted. You need to say those things, and it is 100% respected on my end. I want you to hear my why, and so it's important that the community hears my why of where my kids are at um, and how that came above. It's a long story. I'm going to make it a lot shorter because this is a short, I don't have all day to sit here. So we were in Allen Park. My family had lived there for 18 years. Um, my oldest daughter, Cameron, um, went to school in Allen Park, kindergarten through eighth grade. On a very random January winter evening, my child came home from school and we were sitting at the kitchen table having dinner like we always do as a family. And she said, Mom and Dad, can I talk to you about something? I thought, oh, God, what's the drama at school today? You know, she's an eighth grader. She said, I don't think I want to go to Allen Park High School. And I said, what? Why? Because we outgrew our home. We are a blended family of seven. We were in a typical three-bedroom um, ranch, 1,200-square-foot home, seven people crazy. We wanted to move a long time ago and so I was so irritated with her because she was the reason we didn't move because of all of her friends in Allen Park and she didn't want to leave. She said to us, I said, what are you talking about? And she said, people think it's weird when I say that I'm going to be a cardiothoracic surgeon. And I said, well, that is very weird because you're not even 14 yet and most children your age are nowhere near that mindset. And she said, well, that's why I want to go to that high school by Papa and Grandma's house. And I said, what? What high school? My parents at the time lived in LaSalle. They now live in Erie. I said, what high school? And she said, it's called St. Mary Catholic Central. And mom, they graduated 100% of their students and 94% went to four-year universities. My eighth grade daughter rolled out this entire research plan of what she wanted to do and who she wanted to be around and the type of students. Um, my immediate response, I think you remember from the first interview, I went to Riverview. I said, you are never allowed to be a Kestrel. <laughs> it's not happening. <laughs> so she said, Mom, what are you talking about? No, no, no. My second response, I'm a public school educator. I believe in public education, and it is an absolute no to put my kids in private school. You're not supposed to do that. It ended with her leaving the dinner table, slamming her bedroom door, and my husband, who's back there somewhere, saying to me, are you kidding me? She just did all this research. Amy, the least we should do is offer a tour and take her and see what they have. We want to move anyway. She did the research. We went there. We toured the school. She personally fell in love with the school. Obviously, I agreed to it. She's a junior there now and is extremely successful. They've done a wonderful job. I will never, ever say anything negative about our SMCC family. With that being said, the plan, we sold our house in 24 hours in Allen Park. We had to move. It was the fastest thing ever. The market, as you know, two years ago, over two years ago, was absolutely brutal. We had full intention. My husband and I sat down. We talked about where we want to live. It was 100% our decision to move our children to Woodhaven Brownstown School District. 
It was close enough where Cameron could drive herself and SMCC buses to the Gibraltar at 75 exit, so the bus picked her up there. Friend of a friend of a friend found us a condo to rent month to month, and from that point, our girls were enrolled in Wagenka Elementary and Wagenka Brownstown School District. We loved the district. That was going to be our home. As we were searching for houses, our broker called us and said, just so you know, the taxes here are $10,000 a year, and you have to add $1,000 a month onto your mortgage payment. And I said, I'm sorry. Pardon me, what? I panicked. Then she said, have you ever considered Newport? And I said, what? Newport? I said, what? what? Newport? What do you mean? And I'm like, wait a second. And it clicked. Jefferson? And she was like, yes. I'm like, no, never. She's like, Amy, it's only five miles-ish north on 75. And with Cameron being SMCC, et cetera, et cetera. That year went by with our girls at Wiginka. It was a very tough decision for us because they were already getting acclimated. And we all know how children become very acclimated to their school family. They thought they were going to stay at Wiginka. Kevin and I, my husband and I had a conversation about do we give $1,000 a month to the city of Brownstown, what even Brownstown in tax money? Or do we explore the opportunity because we have seen a whole year of growth through our daughter Cameron through faith-based education. Our faith is very important to us as parents and the fact that it was $1,000 a month to go to the city, that's when we decided to tour St. Charles. That is what landed us there. There was never a moment where it was, oh my gosh, Amy G woke up one day and said, never again, public education. That did not happen. It is really, really important that every one of you hear my truth and hear my story. People that know me personally know that everything I just relate to you is 100% what happened with our family. Faith-based education, as we all know today, whether we have children or not, the world is not the greatest right now. It's ugly. And if I can give my kids a strong foundation in their faith, before they go on to high school, that's important to us um, as parents. So I hope that's not held against me. Um, but I will tell you, if Cora was here, my eight-year-old, she has a Jefferson Bears sweatshirt. Her best friend are the Brews, um, their daughter, and she is a bear through and through. Um, I would be incredibly proud to bring my children to Jefferson High School, 1,000%. Um, to remove them and uplift them due to mom's career immediately, just due to mom's job from their family after they just left Wiginka would not be in their best interest. So I hope that you would support that. Um, back to the question on enrollment. The partnership with all of the schools in our area has to be paramount. I never hear anybody talk about Triumph. Triumph is your charter and we have a lot of kids in Newport that go to Triumph. The partnership there, shadow days in eighth grade, shadow days at St. Charles, Bringing the children here to shadow at Jefferson High School. Our student leadership at the high school absolutely need to be present in those buildings. I, You better believe I have had conversation with Mrs. Lacey, the principal at St. Charles, talking about that. And obviously she has her personal, excuse me, professional obligation, obviously, to market CC and Gabriel Richard, do the archdiocese, fully respect that. With that being said, and this is exactly where I stand on this, SMCC is a, as a, a current SMCC parent. That school is not for all children at all. It is a college base. It is, a, it is an absolute perfect fit for my daughter, Cameron. I can tell you, it, I don't know if it's a perfect fit for my little ones because they're too young right now. But there are kids that need Jefferson High School beyond belief, especially with the growth of our early middle college that we're bringing here and the CTE programs. There is so much more that needs to be done with those programs, but that needs to be marketed. The trades are huge right now, and there are a lot of kids that are not college bound and that is completely okay. There are kids, a lot of kids from St. Charles right now, around 50% of my two kids' classes are absolutely Jefferson High School bound. And they need to know what the programs are so we don't lose them to the other schools and marketing them. The communication, I, it's like a revolving, that's all I keep hearing from the staff that I, when I network in the community is the communication has to be better in the district. The what and the why, that's why I'm always on your Facebook pages and I'm looking at the rec center posts and I'm looking at your district posts of what is happening. I love the recent posts with the kids showing the students' activities of what they're doing in the classrooms live and how they're show, showcasing students, um, student of the month at the high school and showcasing them. Um, the presence of the district and all of the amazing things that are happening here is exactly how we increase enrollment because I can promise you people 
dwell on negativity. And we all know this. And people see the newspaper and they see things that this district has gone through and automatically think that it is a red flag to send their kids there because of what's happening. But they're not privy to what takes place every single day, boots on the ground in the district. So the communication and transparency, it has to. That's why I wanted to bring up my story so you understood how we landed as the family because there was never a day in the world that I said that that would happen. But once I was exposed to it in this world that we live in today, it was really, really important to my husband and I and our faith. And I really appreciate your support on that. Absolutely. Any follow up to those questions? Yes. Okay. Oh, I'm Jack. Uh, I just want to say thank you for explaining all of that. Yeah. Yes, Absolutely. Yeah. I yes, I, I did it, but that's one of the things I told Pete. I said, no, Pete, please don't. I, I actually, I know there's obviously rules to interviews and the whole discrimination laws and all that, but I said, it, the community and the people deserve to hear it, and I understand, and that's why I said in the beginning, I fully respect it. it it's a warranted question. So I have the pleasure of asking the questions for the community, and I have four. Okay. The first one is, um, you shared a comment that the $150 family rec center membership was very <coughs> low. Yes. But that amount might be a challenge for many of our families. What do you see as a reasonable membership fee for our families? That's a fantastic question. Um, so one of the things I pride myself on is making sure we meet families and students where they're at. So in my current position, I have families that are extremely, extremely financially, they're not well. They're not doing well. We provide food, groceries, clothing, the whole bit. That is something that I would sit down and I've actually already talked to Elisa Upler about is talking about how families apply through the system when you think of something like the YMCA and you have different ways of looking at what people can afford. That is something that we can look at as a district as a whole. Um, what, what more we can bring in. So like the G family may be able to pay more for their family to be members of the REC, but I'll use the last name Smith. No offense to anybody with last name Smith. I'm just using it because it's easy. <laughs> but the Smith family may not be able to afford that. And that, I think that question is fantastic um, because it needs to be noted and looked at. I just felt across the board with everything that the rec center does offer, there can be some wiggle room in there of what we can bring in more to the district because of everything that it offers. So if there's a way that Ms. Epler and I can sit down and go over that and what does that look like and what are different ways and explore other cities that may have that, which there aren't many. We are a huge luxury having that here in the district. Um, I just feel like there, there could be a lot more for that. And we can meet the needs of all families. And I would never, ever, as a superintendent, ever support turning a family away from a rec center that can't afford it, period. Okay. All right. Um, Let's see here. So this one is um, it's a little heavy. I know as a school principal, you have experienced a shooting at one of your schools. I How did you handle that? Are parents having a gun in the parking lot? Yeah. Um, so this is from somebody who knows me, clearly. Uh, knows my history. So um, yes, in Detroit, um, June 15th, excuse me, June 5th, 2015, um, I had a school shooting in Detroit at my school, um, 23 bullets through the school. Unfortunately, it took police 46 minutes to respond. Um, that was the reason for the resignation that summer. I was seven months pregnant with Cora, my youngest, um, and it was terrible, <laughs> but, uh, it was gang affiliated. Um, the young man came to Marcus territory. His dad was the CEO of one of the largest gangs on the east side of Detroit. And unfortunately, one of my eighth grade students, his dad was the CEO of the opposing gang. Um, so he came to Marcus territory. There was language via phone between those two students. And he came, it was a typical Tuesday morning. I had my Tim, Tim Horton's cup of coffee in front of me and looked out my window. I was with my assistant principal going over the plan for the day. It was the first thing early in the morning. And I looked out the window and he threw his hood up and pulled his pistol out of his hoodie and just started shooting. I don't want to say there's nothing good about the situation, obviously, but I'm happy to say that nobody was injured. Uh, this young man never entered the building. 
straightforward. Um, he was arrested and was convicted, obviously. We were unbelievably prepared. As I said in my 90 day plan, preparation is the key to success. At no time, safety, I will, it is the most important by far thing ever in education. In this building, every school building, by every employee, the training has to be there. Every single staff member has to be trained on what to do in the event of a shooting. They can happen anywhere, not just on the east side of Detroit. I am happy to say, with the question, um, staff immediately knew what to do. I am the last person to exit the building. I'm the one who directs the staff that we were all Alice trained. I was able to get everybody ready to go. I was waiting for this person because there were no police, as I shared, waiting for him to enter the school. Uh, I had a security officer, but of course he's not allowed to carry a gun. So um, staff had backpacks on. The backpacks were filled with everything they needed, all emergency lists for parents and phone numbers, flashlights, snacks, everything of where we're going. We had both destinations on the east and west side of the buildings of where we evacuate to, and we had a whole entire plan. Bulletproof shutters were lowered. Um, we were ready to go. 23 bullets through the school. He ended up walking down the street, and the police, 45 minutes later, found him. Um, the same thing has to happen here. The training, I believe, Alice trained yes. in the district. <coughs> yeah. So I talked to, funny story, uh, it's not funny, but it's kind of. Last week, I was at the Michigan School Safety Conference, um, learning the new things and what they have for schools. I was there with my social worker and several central office staff from Wayne Westland, and we sat at a table, and across from me, we were talking, friends of mine came over from other districts, like, hey, I heard about Jefferson Amy, oh my gosh, you'd be great, da, da, da. And I was talking about it, and I sat back at the table, and we were talking about different things, and I looked over, I said, I'm sorry, I don't know who either one of you are. I'm like, I'm so sorry, I should introduce myself. I said, I'm Amy G, so it's very nice to meet you. I shook their hand, we know, and I was like, what? We're from the Monroe ISD. <laughs> so one of the gentlemen at the table was the SRO um, who oversees all of the SROs for the district, or the, excuse me, for Monroe County, Mr. Miller, I believe. Yes. Um, and then the young lady, and I'm so embarrassed to admit, I do not remember her name, but she was a social worker for the ISD that works over here. She was very much so an advocate for Jefferson and talking about how um, what I said needs to happen, needs to happen here. Um, so the other things um, I, I do, unfortunately, have had situations in Inkster, my current school um, at Hicks and we must land where parents will pull out a gun if somebody cuts them off wrong in the parking lot and they're upset. And I go out there and there's only two police officers in Inkster. Um, they are going through a lot. They do have a new chief that just came in, but um, I'm a little bit of a different breed um, and I go out there and confront the parent. But the reason why I do that is because of the relationship. I'm known as Mama G. Um, everybody calls me Mama G. Um, so when it happens, I go out there and say, so-and-so, I call the parent by their name, get in your car and pull in a parking spot right now. Oh, I'm sorry, Mama G. No, get in the parking spot and get in my office now. I mentor more parents than I do students. Um, I will be very honest with you. Um, so yes, that has happened in Detroit and in Inkster. Um, we have parents that unfortunately <coughs> go that route, um, but I'm not afraid of confrontation with parents because they know exactly who I am and they know Mama G don't play. That's what they say. <laughs> but I have a way to learn to try. Yeah. Yes, isn't it interesting? Yes. <laughs> I mean, it's a blinker. Yes, a blinker. Yes. Oh, All right. Um, you have a history of flipping schools. I wonder if you will come here and make changes as a resume builder. This isn't a critique, it is a concern. Warranted. So my last eight years um, speaks for itself. I absolutely just shared because of your previous question why I left Detroit. So I, my heart and soul is Detroit. I love that place. I love the students. I still talk to those students till this very day. Um, they have my phone number, the whole bit. Um, very close with the families and my students in Detroit. I promised myself and my family that I wouldn't stay somewhere where I didn't have emergency responders. That is happening in Easter right now. Um, I think I shared my first interview. I had to use an AED machine on a five-year-old um, a few weeks back. And an ambulance didn't come for 18 minutes. So it's too much. 
Um, so here, and I live here, um, the answer to this community member and anybody else that shares the same concern. I applied here as I, I'm gonna keep saying it because I'm so interested in being here. I live here a minute and a half from here, literally. I meant what I said earlier that my kids will, if I'm afforded the opportunity, not just if, even if I'm not afforded the opportunity, we are still very much so interested in Jefferson High School, just so everybody knows. I would be thrilled to be on stage when my kids get their diploma. They're in third and fourth grade. That is a long time from now. There's many years between now and then where I would have the opportunity to do so. I'm looking for a home. Superintendent is my end goal um, with my career. In addition to superintendent, as I get much older and near retirement age, which I am, by the way, nowhere near, <laughs> um, I would like to pursue my doctorate. Um, that's my next thing for myself professionally because I'd like to, during my retirement, be a professor to help aspiring administrators. That's a goal of mine um, at the college level. So um, I, I am here. I'm all about family and I live here in the community and I want to be here to make a difference and I really feel like I could. And because of that, um, it would be a long-term stay, 1,000%. Awesome. All right, I have one last question. Yes. Um, and this one is going to spawn off a lot of other questions. Okay. At least it did yesterday. Um, what do you plan to do to bridge the gap between Jefferson and the Monroe ISD with special ed specifically? What do you plan to do about special ed students being pushed into gen ed with no aids? I have... <laughs> a whole page of notes <laughs> on ISD issues that I'm already having and I don't work here. I'm on payroll somewhere else and I'm already frustrated of the things that I've heard. So in my last interview, you probably remember me sharing the fact that my entire background is special education. That is one of the reasons why I keep applying here is because I feel, and you'll hear lots of it in my closing statement of why me, but 1,000% special education is an unbelievable passion of mine. There's a two part to this. Obviously, special education students and obviously general education students. And of course, the teachers, and I say that plural because there's intervention, there's resource room teachers, there's special ed teachers, there's social workers, there's general teachers. Everybody encompasses into the team. I keep hearing the same things over and over that the students with disabilities are causing problems in the general classes. What I'm going to ask the district, as well as all of you, is that we are careful because parents of children with disabilities already know they have it more difficult. And it's hard. And it's, it's imagine how that feels for somebody as a mother. My child is a nuisance and not welcome. That's very, very disheartening. And they want their child to be respected included all of the above with that being said what i'm hearing over and over and over in the district is that the behaviors are what are the largest frustration because there's the lack of training which absolutely has me on a whole different level the reason is because we have the monroe isd that has the ability to provide the training to the district our district <coughs> on all different types of things to support children with disabilities. Obviously, CPI training, nonviolent crisis intervention. When a kiddo is going ham, throwing chairs, punching, kicking, the whole bit. I deal with it every single day in my school. I shared with you I have four self-contained classrooms in my building. I asked for them to be in my building because of my background in special education and how I'm so unbelievably comfortable handling kiddos like that. Not everybody is. Teachers choose their profession and go into their certifications based on what they feel that their area is best suited for, of what they do best. It might not be serving children with disabilities, but that doesn't mean that they can't or that they won't. But without the proper training and the partnership with the ISD to make sure that they have that training, the most frustrating thing to me, one of the most frustrating things to me is when people just put kids in places where they don't belong. I am an advocate, I'm not just a principal. I advocate if my staff were in front of me right now and you got to meet all of them, the privilege, because they're phenomenal people, 
My special ed team is second to none. We advocate for our kids every single day, and we have kiddos right now in our self-contained classroom at Hicks that are not in their right placement. They need to go into a more restrictive placement at a day treatment center with their emotional impairment because their behaviors, unfortunately, regardless of the hundreds of interventions that we put in place, and it takes a lot for me to IEP a kiddo out of my building because I feel like we failed, but instead looking at it as we've done all of these things, and if we don't put the student where they belong, we're failing them which is exactly why we have to do what we have to do with the kiddos here. Putting students in general education that have high behaviors is absolutely unacceptable. The reason is because high behaviors mean, everybody in special education world know this, behavior is communication. And if we are not meeting that student where they're at, and we are not giving them what they need, they are going to act out. It would be like putting any of us in a meeting with everybody speaking a foreign language and we have no idea what they're talking about. So I'm frustrated and I can't communicate like my peers. So I'm going to start flipping desks. I'm gonna attack my teacher because they're not helping me because they have 27 plus other students to work with and it becomes a complete disaster. How am I going to do this? CPI training has to happen. I keep hearing the same thing that we have. I have the same thing in my building. We have the same thing at Wayne Westland. It's across the state. We have a shortage of employees. Nobody is going to sign up to work at, in Jefferson schools and say, you're going to be a para for children with disabilities and gen ed classrooms and just be dropped off. And good luck. That's not going to work. Nobody is going to do that. People know and people are talking about how this is happening. Mr. Steve McNew and I are gonna have lots of conversations and invite him and his team over to Jefferson to observe the worst thing. And as a principal right now, and as a future superintendent, there is nothing more frustrating and feeling like a slap in the face as a principal, as a teacher, as an aide, as a parent, where people in other buildings are the ISD, or respectfully so, people here in central office that keep saying this is what's gonna happen and they've never seen the classroom. Where are the observations? They need to see the students at the classroom firsthand and sit there. I say this every single day. I have students right now in my building. There's a child that needs to be going over to Livonia schools. They have a more, uh, a lower, it's based, a MOCAI classroom, moderately, moderately cognitively impaired. This kiddo is in our mild CI classroom at Hicks, and she deserves the world. And she is struggling every single day. You would not believe the hoops we have had to jump through. And when I tell you, I am first an advocate, then I'm a principal. Advocacy is not just for students with disabilities. It is also for students with general education students, as a parent myself. That interrupts the learning environment for everybody. That stops the teacher from teaching. So we have to make sure that if there's a student that is fully included, they have to be supported with training. They have to be supported with observations on is this the right fit. One of the things that I'm most frustrated about is for some reason, Monroe County, I don't know why this happens, but I'm going to find out. They keep putting classrooms as categorical. That is so outdated, so incredibly outdated. And the ISD needs to hear from me about that because children with IEPs deserve to be in classrooms that fits who they are, that they already have a bigger struggle, right? I shared with you in my building, I have two classrooms, children with cognitive impairments, and I have two classrooms, children with emotional impairments. And Monroe, Monroe County, the ISD calls them categorical classrooms, and everybody's just supposed to fit under one umbrella. An ASD classroom looks, feels, and presents completely different than a classroom for children with cognitive impairments, or a completely different, I can assure you, with children with emotional impairments. But putting everybody in one classroom under the same umbrella is absolutely horrific. I don't know if I'm gonna be powerful enough to change the whole entire county, <laughs> but I will tell you, I will work tirelessly to make sure that that partnership is not just had and meetings aren't just had. The teachers, gen ed and special education teachers, as well as social workers, there is, it is called an IEP team, IEP team for a reason. That last letter, team. There has to be a team of people 
that meet with the ISD so their voices are heard so they can describe exactly what's happening every single day in their classrooms. They are very much, it can't just be the Amy G show where I go meet with the ISD and then bring the information back. They need to come here. They are a service to our school district and that is part of their responsibility. I could go on and on, but I know I have to stop talking. <laughs> Sorry. Can you tell my passion? Yes. Um, most children, when they come to school, especially with these uh, cases, they mimic their parents a lot. Okay. And in doing so, I see a lot of focus on the on the kids, which is great. How are we going to communicate, communicate to the parents that some teachers, some staff feel like, yeah. So how do we, how we communicate that? Yep, um, bringing parents in. So I said to you in round one, I'm a boundary crasher. Parents know me, hence why I can speak to parents like I'm speaking to all of you right now. It has to be there, it has to be present. And sometimes, sitting on this side of the table, you have to have that courageous conversation. You have to. You have to address it. I'm extremely direct. I'm very transparent. I have nothing to hide. We have to describe what is happening, but that comes with more service to the parent and advocacy because oftentimes, actually when I use the word majority of the time, parents don't even know their rights within schools and they're not educated upon what they can do to advocate for their children. I'm huge on, there are so many districts today that shy away from telling parents their rights and what they can and cannot do in schools and what things that they can do and what, what resources are out there for their children. If a student is acting the way they are in the school, you better believe they're doing the exact same thing at home. What's happening is that at home, parents are doing things. I certainly don't want to generalize the statement because not all parents have this issue, of course, but there are parents at home that struggle, so they do what they have to do to get by. They might have two, three, four kids at home and one with a disability that takes so much of the attention just like that individual child does in a classroom. And parents are doing the best they can. I am known and my special education team is known. This is one of my questions in closing as well. I meet with parents and talk about, I go to appointments with parents as a principal. I attend therapy appointments, not when the child is with, it, with therapy, but we sign the release to make sure that the parent is comfortable because of the relationship is reciprocated, that we can talk to the student's therapist. If the student doesn't have a therapist, whether if the student's behaving a certain way due to trauma or if it's solely based on their disability, we have those conversations about where we can connect with their therapist to make sure that they have a clear indication of what is happening in the schools. In addition to that, we open up the talk about what things they're doing at home. We provide, if a student has no communication, I tap into our speech therapist and get a PEC system for home, picture exchange communication system where the PECs are printed. So they're used at home. So there's consistency between home and school. So when the parent is struggling, they can say, what? I didn't know this is a thing. When it's time to brush teeth, we take that PEC right off the Velcro board and we it's time to brush teeth. The student knows exactly what to do. So when we're using that form, this is just a simple example, but when we're using that form of communication in home, it's that much more welcome in the classroom where the student is familiar and we're all working together. Home and school have to work together and be on the same united team because that is what's best for kids. When home and school work against each other, that is when the only person that it affects is the student, period. And it can't happen. So the parents have to come in and our administrators have to be have that those courageous conversations. But I am somebody as a superintendent where I will sit right next to that principal. I will attend those meetings. If we have cases where we have parents that are concerned and question things, and the ISD is there, we're not feeling supported. Please invite me. Put me on that Google invite, and I will be there, one thousand percent. Yes. That's it for me. Okay. Oh. 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 Two and a half questions. Okay. 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 Um, first and foremost, I appreciate the energy. Wow. <laughs> okay. Transparency. So one of the things I talk about with Pete, just so you know, transparency is trying to get myself to talk slower. And I'm like, I don't, I don't really know how. I'm going to try my best, but I am a high energy person, and that's why I do it. I'm a multitasker all the time. So, so I'm going to challenge you. All right. Transparency, not energy. Okay. I'm ready. We all have buttons that people push. And oh. Even events can get us to a point where we're not our we're not ourselves, okay, unfortunately. So, uh, what buttons set you up? How do you manage them? And from an outside perspective, if someone had to sit there and say, hey, yeah, this is G, act this, how would you describe that? 
So most people wouldn't see Mrs. G act at my maddest because I'm able to be, I'm a leader. So the way I act in public or in front of others is presented majority of the time. And I'm not gonna say always because nobody's perfect. Majority of the time with respect, but I'm really firm, really direct when I need to be because you have to, you have to make those difficult conversations. I will go into my office and have moments with myself <laughs> where I need to reset and loose up. Um, there's a place and there's a time for that, 1,000%. Um, there are a team of people. There's always people that you can call, people that I can vent to, always. I hope that that's the relationship that all of us will have with myself, where I can call and vent, and we're working together on things like, oh my gosh, this just happened today. And we have that reciprocated relationship. Um, the biggest things that push my buttons are what I said earlier. People that make decisions on behalf of kids that are not present in those children's lives. What does that mean? People that sit with a fancy suit like I'm wearing today and do not come into the classrooms to where the things are happening. Or people from an ISD or anywhere else that are making decisions and telling me, this is what you're gonna do, Amy. And they've never seen firsthand what is taking place. That is crippling. It is completely unprofessional. It grinds me to my core because I do what's best for kids. My entire philosophy and all decision making is, is this what's best for kids? Because what's best for kids is in turn best for staff. And those two go together because to answer the questions that you said, Ms. Lancaster, with, with the respect of the kids being pushed into classrooms, if it's best for an individual child to be pushed into that classroom, it has to be what's best for a teacher, but that can't happen unless that communication and the training and all of the areas that that child needs to be successful are met. So that reminds me, and of course, lovely legislation. Um, I have a huge problem with lots of things that happen in legislation with public education and per pupil, and there's a lot of things I could go into, but um, things that are out of my control, but I'm known. I will drive to Lansing if I need to. So I am an action person. Um, I am not one you will learn very quickly and I'm putting it out there now. If there is something that I feel strongly about, I am something, someone, and there's some, there's, it's affecting the district, it's affecting an individual student or collectively all students in a district or anywhere where I'm at. I will absolutely work so incredibly hard until that goal is achieved to make sure that's done. Um, of course, with support of all of you, we would work together to make sure that that happens and explaining the why, because what's best for kids is what's best for kids. And I will advocate until kingdom come for kids, any of them. And anybody who knows me personally knows that. I do whatever is needed to support children and families every single day. Yes, you're welcome. Okay, um, we spoke earlier about uh, sports, obviously. Yes, I like that. Jefferson prides itself in sports, but obviously, you know, we we have things to improve. Obviously, yes. How would you manage? Lots of different ways. So, first, I mean, how do I say this? Well, Jefferson wrestling is what you're known for, right? You have a phenomenal wrestling program. You are known for rebuilding your different sports. The coaches need to be more involved in the school. What I mean by that, today, I have two girls that were messing around at school. I took the day off, by the way, to have a day to myself. I got my nails done <laughs> to come here for today. Um, I My intern uh, covered for me in my building, and she called me with two different concerns that she was struggling with. And one of them was students that are acting out that are two of our top basketball players. They are, I helped them get on a phenomenal AAU basketball team. Simple, the coach is involved. It's called a student athlete. If you are not a student, you have no business being an athlete. We have to work together to make sure it coincides. That helps discipline in schools, that helps schools discipline decrease. Our coaches have to be involved. The first thing I told my intern today was, oh, you just need to call the coach. Amy, what, okay. Like, yeah, get coach on the phone. They, if they're not acting like a student, 
I promise you, because I reached out to her, I have stamped my name on those two young ladies. Coach is going to have a problem if they're acting a fool in my, in my school right now. It can't happen. I keep hearing over and over that there's discipline concerns across the district, not just students with disabilities, of course not. General education students, vaping in hallways, students doing things that are so unbelievably unacceptable. Whether they're athletes or not, obviously that has to stop, but I promise you some of them are. The minute a coach gets involved, I am a coach. I've coached for 22 years. The minute I graduated from Wayne State as a softball player, I started coaching. I wanted to give back to the game. I still do today. Um, so first question I ask my kids, what are your grades? What are you doing in school? I had one of my young ladies get in trouble not too long ago. And we had a serious heart to heart about it. What could you have done differently? I, I'm very vested. And that's a travel team, by the way. They, they're not in my school, obviously. I, these are kids from all over Ohio. I have kids from Canada on my team, all over the place. Student athlete. How do we increase our athletics and do better? People need to show up. I told you in the first interview, I'm from Riverview, born and raised. I dreaded coming here. Dreaded it because Jefferson was the powerhouse. Everybody came to the football games, the softball field. There was a couple people from Riverview in the stands and the Jefferson stands were packed. The cheering, the yelling, the pride, their pride, huge. How do we get those people in there? Believing in our district again. Believing in what we have is absolutely second to none and we are able to compete. We can't do that without the support of Ms. Epler and the coaches and having very, very intentional meetings about how we expand our program. I mentioned earlier, 13 girls coming out for softball is unbelievably disheartening. Unbelievably disheartening. I looked at those seventh and eighth grade girls, what's the theater program look like? Our middle school teams. Met Mr. Coach Leach today, being able to talk to our middle school programs about what we're doing to impact sports at the middle school level to make sure we have that theater program. Jefferson Bears program. My kids play in your junior Bears program, basketball team. Even my Cora, who's not athletic, by the way. She's a competitive dancer. She would kill me for saying that she's not athletic, but because dancing is obviously a sport, but <laughs> she is an amazing dancer and she loves it. So guess what? She played junior Bears basketball and she gave it her all. That theater program, just that alone, I mentioned in my first interview as well. Why are kids going to play for airport softball and baseball rec program? There are kids in Newport playing for airport. There are kids in Newport playing for the ice program in Flat Rock. Why? We need to market what we have here, our rec center. Nobody should be going elsewhere. But if we're not marketing and people don't know, I mentioned earlier in my first interview, people didn't even know that you could have a birthday party at the rec center, a pool party. Kaysen was like the most popular kid at the school. Like, whoa, we have a pool party. You know, that's amazing. You know, so we have to do a better job at marketing all of that. And that is something that I've spoken to Elisa. Um, I coached her. <laughs> so I know she has the ability to expand and the coaches and get them in and be a part of that. She does have the ability to do that. And she wants to do that. She has shared that with me, first and foremost. So the feeder program has to be bulked up in order to create more interest in moving forward. Uh, last question. And uh, real quickly, your experience with facilities, I, talk, I heard you talking earlier about facilities, committee, and so forth. What can you tell us about it? Any experience with facilities, equipment? So Build your building itself. Do you yes. know your building? Yes. So. I actually share great frustration, and this is live, so they're going to hear me say this, but it's not, it's known. <laughs> but I have a lot of frustration with our facilities department because sometimes our, we, we call them B and G in Lane West Land, which is Building and Grounds Department. Building and Grounds Department are responsible, obviously, for all of the things that make the building go when we're not there. Obviously, we're responsible for kids. They're responsible for things, the heating and the cooling and all of the bond stuff. We have a very close relationship with that. Um, all of the contractors, I've just gone through bond work for my school. The relationship has to be there because sometimes people in operations, because they don't know, not because they're trying to be intentionally like cut across, but can stop something from happening. But here's a prime example. We have a book vending machine we put in my title budget. The school that I'm at, a lot of our children don't have books at home. It's really important in increasing student reading achievement. 
books have to be at home. Children need to love reading. They need to have interest in what they're reading. All of the above. Long story short, we have this book funding machine. It was approved through title. It was approved by the state. Boom. Purchased. Boom. Stopped by operations. Did you get this approved by the superintendent, Amy, and one of my supervisors? Did you get this approved? Because this might cause a union problem and make the librarian obsolete. What? No. It is not going to do that. <laughs> It's a vending machine that is based on token systems, which is clearly indicated in the title budget for students to earn for academic rewards. They get to take the token to the vending machine. It doesn't cost them a dollar. They get to put the token, how exciting, and they get to literally pick a book from a vending machine that they're interested in. And it shoots out like you would buy a Snickers bar at another location. It's a reward. Why is operations impeding that? The why is because they don't know. And it needs to be communicated. So I emailed back when I found out about this. And I, I explained clearly because they don't know. And that's okay. But that communication piece, that barrier, because the operations department is not privy to the title budget or privy to what we're allowed to spend certain expenditures on per state requirement, right? So they don't know. So the communication has to be there. In addition to what is happening. So, for example, at the middle school, we don't have home ec anymore. At the high school, I'm hearing that the kitchen and the food services department would love, love, love to have a culinary program for part of the CTE. If we have the money, why not? There are so many kids that would be so empowered. You guys literally have the starting program here at your rec center from, I'm going to say it wrong because I don't have it memorized, but farm to table, right? Okay, so farm to table. You're inviting children in the community to come learn how to cook. So why are we not going to support? And I'm not saying we're not, by the way. I'm saying what an option. It's awesome. If we're saying that we're increasing kids to learn how to cook and we're providing this as a community output for children, let's look at this and have a meeting with operations team of, is this a possibility? Is it budget friendly? Is it fiscally responsible? Can we do this? If we can, let's go. Let's get it going. Um, based on the CTE and the early college stuff. I don't know if it's an answer. Oh, absolutely. Okay, okay. Yes, you're welcome. So, before we move on to anyone else, yes. my timekeeper has let me know we're learning a little bit over. Okay. We want to keep it fair to all the candidates, so we're going to, yes, so if your questions are asked, ask what you want to ask, obviously. But we just, I'll be much shorter. We just need to be mindful, so we're not absolutely. going above and beyond. Let's move <clears throat> We have staff. We have staff that has been used to doing things the way things have been done over the years. Yes. With that said, how will you make adjustments and changes in the way staff will react on your requests? I talked to staff today at the middle school. Um, there's a huge change with fifth grade, obviously in the district. So <clears throat> I wasn't here. I wasn't a part of that decision. Um, but I'm not sure how it was relayed to staff at all. But if there's something that has to be relayed to staff that may be uncomfortable, the only way to articulate that is by having face-to-face in-person conversations. You can't just go to somebody and say that something has to change without providing the why. They deserve the why. They are equally professional. They are equal professionals across the district. Everybody deserves the why to find out why something is going to change. Whether somebody is new to the district, or a veteran. I absolutely know, based on my own research, that there's a lot of staff members here in the community that they literally born and raised a bear, and they're still a bear, and they're in their 50s. That's all they know, and that's all they've been here for that long. They graduated from Jefferson the whole bit. Data doesn't lie. Data has to be presented to support the why behind the decisions that are happening. The data for the fifth grade situation, I would hope that a survey was sent out of some sort to families and staff about a possibility of doing that and getting feedback. Even if the feedback is not in the direction of where the district wanted to go with that decision, we have feedback on it and we need to dissect it. I'm just using it as an example. If there's something that's happening, a change in curriculum, um, a difference of handling discipline, we need to have a meeting about it. We need to talk about it because our data speaks to itself. Our students are not growing academically at the rate that they should, for an example. 
30% growth is unacceptable. We have to make changes, but the changes aren't going to be made unless the teachers are given the tools that they need. Communication. Thank you. How will you continue to grow our CTE programs and what other CTE courses did you have in mind? Is that it? Okay. Yep. I didn't know if you had more. Sorry. Um, so I did some digging and some searching. Um, I shared before, uh, Wayne Wesleyan is known for our CTE program. Um, it is absolutely gorgeous. Um, I encourage all of you to take a peek at it because learning what other places have and what are successful helps develop what we don't have here and what are different options. Exposing ourselves to what other people have. Just like I talked about earlier with the teachers in the classrooms, exposing yourselves to difference of Delivery of instruction. Other districts are doing things. I looked up Ida's program uh, last night because they share around the same number of population with us here at Jefferson, around 14, 1500 students. And I looked at their early middle college and their CTE things and their brochure of what they offer over there. Um, some of the things are absent on the brochure that we have here. So is it due to lack of funding? Is it due to lack of interest? The only thing that should drive the CTE programs are community and student interest. Surveys. Students should absolutely have a voice. Our district is responsible for making sure that our students graduate from Jefferson High School as productive citizens in the community. We are tasked with that every single day. Our students, by the time that they start high school, should start being exposed to different career options as well as different options of what they want to do from their own personal trajectory, like I referenced earlier, college bound, trades bound, whatever that looks like. I talked earlier, last thing, dental hygiene, cosmetology, culinary. Those are three different things that I thought of that are not on there. I see a lot of different things, but surveys, and those are just things that Amy G thought of, that is, and I've seen in other districts. But you have an unbelievable shop at the middle school that is completely underutilized. Why are we not having community members driving their cars in there for repair? partner. Our schools, our campus is so connected. Why are high school students not going over there for part of auto as an option and servicing cars? Roseville does it. Wayne Wesleyan does it. We're community members instead of paying. I'm not trying to put mechanics out of business at dealerships, obviously, but that can happen as well. Thank you. We have a school with some strong personalities and leaders. Will you be able to stand your ground and do what is right in front of them? Some dangers? Yes. Short and sweet. Absolutely. Um, I have zero. Yeah, the answer is yes. I have zero problem. I have said it throughout my interview this evening with courageous conversations, but those courageous conversations have to be backed up with data to support the lie. Data does not lie. With not having any superintendent experience, what do you feel would be your best asset to run the job? Communication, um, networking, partnering with Michigan Leadership Institute, um, talking about different things that I can do better um, and start the ground running here. I have so many different ideas, like my brain, I have unbelievable pages of notes I've been taking in my research and getting to know this district. Um, not having superintendent experience does not mean that I'm not able to do the job. That's like saying my first year as principal at 30 years old in Detroit to flip a school on the east side of Detroit that I wasn't going to be able to do it because it was my first year as a principal. I went from classroom teacher to principal, and I did it. Same thing here for superintendent. I Networking is so important to me. Going to different retreats, working with you guys on retreats, going to superintendent, professional developments and all the different things that they offer for professional development for superintendents. There's so much through MESA as well as MLI. There's a lot. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Mr. You're right. I, I scratched them all off of one. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to make this brief. I'm going to kind of, uh, this is going to be choppy because I'm just trying to take part two. If you're picked as superintendent, you're going to be wearing a lot of hats, a lot of five different hats. Yeah. Okay. You know, we're not like the big schools. Yep. 
during this time, how will you address and what, what would you actually do if you're inundated constantly by your staff, board members wanting to know right now, what's this problem I just heard about from the community, whatever. How do you address the emails and how do you address them coming into your office saying, well, I just heard about this. What, what are your routers? Got it. So I'm a proactive person. There has to be a plan first. The staff have to be communicated with on what the plan is, on how to communicate and the proper channels, chain of command, whatever it happens to be. I am a huge proponent of if there's an issue in a building with a teacher or something and there's something happening, the first person they should be going to is their principal. The principal deserves the respect. They are the leader of that building and they deserve to be able to handle that there. If the principal is not handling it, obviously, and they feel like that there's still an issue, then obviously they can come to me and then we work together. I will never, ever just work around other people's professions to hear somebody behind their back and then come back to that person and say, so-and-so said, da-da-da-da. Prioritizing multitasking is absolutely what I do best. Um, I am 100 miles an hour every single day. Day in, day out. Principal, obviously, is completely different than superintendent. I have almost 500 students in my school, double that with parents. I have tons of emails from board office because it's a macro level district, right? There's so many different things happening, nine million different teams. I put myself on lots of teams in the district. So I'm on the curriculum team, I'm on the improvement team, I'm on lots of different teams. We are constantly having conversations with how we address different things. Prioritizing and my Google calendar is what I live by. If it is not on my Google calendar, I'm not going to be there. I promise. <laughs> so my dentist appointments are on my Google calendar. My children's appointments are on my Google calendar. Every single person that needs me is on my Google calendar. I always make time for people. I will always stay to make sure that people's voices are heard. The difference between a phone call and a person in front of me, the person in front of me, I can address like that. Here's the situation. Boom. Amy delivers what the expectations are and what we're going to do about that situation. I'm going to call that person back because they called and I put that right on my calendar to make sure I don't forget about that phone call that happened. So prioritizing what's in front. So if somebody comes in or if one of you come in or a staff member comes into the office and they have an issue right then and there, that's priority right then and there. A phone call can be happened before I leave at the end of the system. Thank you. All right. Everyone good? All right. So we thank you for your conversation this evening. Uh, we hope you're visit with our staff and the board and thank you for welcome. Have any questions for us? Is there time for questions? I don't even know where Pete is. Yeah, yeah. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. A little bit. Okay. Okay. You're easy ones. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, I I did one of the more important questions um, through the networking and talking with staff is the and that it equates to the partnership with ISD. So I found it interesting. Also, I don't want to use the word concerning, but I guess. I'm wondering why we don't have more social workers employed by Jefferson schools. The ISD social workers obviously are jam packed with IEP service times that they have to meet by law to make sure that they're in compliance. But helping students that struggle with behavior, whether it's through trauma or a disability or whatever it happens to be, I would love to know if that's something that has been explored in the past or something that can be explored in the future, very, very near future, by the way, um, to have social workers on site every single day as a part of building relationships and mentoring students and having social emotional groups, anger management groups, peer to peer relation groups, peer mediation, and buildings for helping with discipline. So, to briefly answer that question, okay, uh, we're aware of the gap with social okay. workers. Um, okay. We have had a hard time finding them. Um, they have been posted, but we have gotten creative. Um, we use some being positions, okay. um, being of social and emotional learning. Yeah, so, okay, um, we have put a social worker at the high school recently who is almost like a top, like a teacher of tomorrow, okay. working on our certification. She's almost there. Okay. Um, so, interventionists have been put in all the buildings, and the need is still there, obviously. So, okay. we need a plan. Okay. But yes, I agree with you. We need, we need them. Okay. Well, we need to find them as yeah. well. Right. Because we, you know, just last year, uh, we lost our social worker at so our lower L 
and um, we had two that left within a week. Okay. So it's been difficult to get the help we need. Okay. Um, I know social workers. Okay. Uh, my current social worker is services Monroe County for private practice as well. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> um, so I mentioned earlier the budget. Um, I was when I looked at the amount of money that's remaining, um, just wondering how we make decisions on spending the money, uh, who's involved, and what if there are current teams of when we discuss what the district needs. Um, for ESSER funds to deplete those, obviously, and then also for our title budgets, I was interested in knowing if the principals are have autonomy for the title budgets with their buildings. The principal do have that. Um, when it comes to spending money, uh, she got my eye twitching again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we, as a board, we have subcommittees. We have small committees, like the facilities committee, the okay. personnel committee. Uh, we try to bring those things to the board, right? The recommendation comes from the committee. Okay. Um, but I think there's another plan that can be put in place for spending that, the funds and the money. Um, we haven't explored it yet, just to be honest with you. Okay. A new plan has not been explored. Okay. And we do have a lot allocated. Go oh, well. That's true. Um, we have a lot allocated in projects that we're working on that just hasn't been spent yet. Spent yet. It's you know, when you're looking at those ESSER yeah, funds, yeah, spent, just, a lot of them dollars are already gone. They're just not off your paper yet. Got it. We're just going to just yeah, scribble a couple of numbers yeah. off there. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Okay. Okay. Um, I can, the last question is fine. I'm good. That's it for questions. <laughs> it was about you, Jim. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> uh, at this time, you can provide us with a little Wonderful. Um, so I want to thank you for bringing me back. Um, Thank you for the opportunity for allowing me to come and see the district today. Um, the weather wasn't helpful. We had to kind of drive around a couple of the buildings, but obviously I live here. I'm a community member. I was very familiar with where the schools are located, of course. Um, I just wanted to reiterate, um, not having superintendent experience um, yet, um, I want to make sure that all of you know that doesn't mean that I could not be successful. There are people that serve in roles every single day. And that doesn't mean experience equals success. And I just want to make sure that's articulated for me. Um, my proven track record as a leader speaks for itself. Um, and if you, I'd just like to share some of those highlights with you before I exit. Um, you have boxes that you want to check as a district for your next superintendent. And my interest is because where I work, it has to be somewhere that I'm interested in and passionate about. Otherwise, I'm not going to do my best work. I've pretty much stalked you <laughs> and have applied, as you are aware, um, twice. And then, of course, emailed you again in December. The random email in December was due to the fact that that's the day that I told my district that I was looking to further my career. Um, and I had to ask my team for letters of recommendation. Um, so I made it known. Um, my staff know. I have zero intentions of returning to Hicks. Whether it's here at Jefferson, where I'm afforded the opportunity to be here or somewhere else, um, I'm ready for the next steps. I would like to consider myself a valued member of the community. I am present. I am known in a short two year span as a positive role model here in the community. Um, I coach, I'm involved in the churches, both. St. Mary's, as well as St. Charles, of course. Um, I want the St. Charles and SMCC situation to be known as a partnership for the district. What better way for me as a community member, as passionate as I am to work for you here in Jefferson Schools, to be able to be the sounding board for those communities of what the high school has. St. Charles, Triumph, wherever it happens to be, of I'm a talker, you haven't noticed. Allow me to be the spokesperson for the district and the communicator, it will be done. I want it to be viewed as a partnership of what comes next. Um, school turnaround in two of the lowest performing schools in the state, twice in one year under my leadership. 
When I say under my, I hate using the word my because that makes it sound like it was only because of me. Absolutely not. I can't stress enough the potential that I have and what I do with shared leadership. Obviously, there comes a point in time where the superintendent or the principal in my case currently has to make those decisions, those tough decisions that sometimes are unpopular. I'm very comfortable in having those decision-making skills. I have to do it all the time. But the why and the data is supported. Um, my first year principal success speaks for itself. Um, I explained why I left each place that I left and where, what got me to where I am today. I am positive and incredibly confident that my first year as a superintendent will mirror or even be better than my first year as a principal. I am extremely competitive, as well as one of the hardest workers you will know, I promise, um, in all facets. And I hope that was conveyed today. My second year in Detroit, I was voted principal of the year. I was 31 years old because of the work I did in one year. That year I was shocked, I couldn't believe it. It was amazing. In 2019 at Hicks, I was nominated and one, NAMI Educator of the Year. NAMI stands for the National Alliance on Mental Illness. I'm an advocate for children of trauma. I'm an advocate for children everywhere. Um, but I got that because I advocated for a school-based therapist at my school. So I partner with an outside agency that they come in and provide therapy sessions for our families or students that are struggling. And it doesn't cost them anything, it's free. So I got that award in 2019. I've been a highly effective principal on all of my evaluations. That is due to my leadership abilities, um, significantly reducing out-of-school suspensions. My first year at Hicks Elementary School, there was 624 office discipline referrals sent to me. 624. Of those 624, 399 resulted in out-of-school suspensions. I partnered with RISA, obviously Wayne County ISD, and we brought in the school improvement facilitators and we developed a plan to turn the building around. Obviously, I was tasked with doing so. I'm super proud to tell you that because of the work and the buy-in from the staff, we are now, last year, we ended the year with 12 out-of-school suspensions. You could walk my halls and see children and see learning from some of the best educators across the state. And that is due to the buy-in and the understanding from my teachers and staff that behaviors, communication, and relationships are key in loving children have to, that has to happen first for anything else. I have the highest risk building in Wayne Westland. I'm the only school in Inkster. I have the lowest staff turnover. I pride myself on my leadership and my relationships with my staff. As a superintendent, it would be the same. Teachers and staff under my leadership it is my job and my due diligence to make sure they don't want to go anywhere because they feel incredibly appreciated with me as their leader. Voices will be heard, action will be put in place to support them. That's what we do, and that's what I've done in all of my buildings, and that's what I would do here. Um, proven successful shared leadership, my staff, I have a leadership team, there's 12 staff on that. I have my school improvement team, which is my PBS, PBIS team has a bigger support we talked about when we dissect our data on school discipline. Where's our heaviest hitters at? Where's our frequent flyers? What are they doing? Why? What can we do to fix it? We have a team for that. And we have our, obviously our team for school safety. Athletics, Jefferson prides themselves on athletics. I talked about the feeder program. It has to be brought up and everybody has to come together. Junior Bear coaches, I know there's a lot of parent volunteers for that, but they need to come in together with the middle school coaches, with the high school coaches. We need to have everybody together to talk about the success of Jefferson, to build that up. I am incredibly competitive. I don't want to lose at all, ever. Again, Jefferson has the ability to get to where they are capable of coming back. There's obviously so much good that's already happening here, but as you said, there is room to grow, for sure. Special education, I've already, I hope I conveyed, I could have talked and answered your question for hours, hours. We're going to have lots more conversations if I'm afforded the opportunity to be your next superintendent. Advocacy has to happen, and the person that advocates and is a superintendent, they have to have advocacy skills, and they have to be familiar with special education. 
and not put somebody in a seat to partner and be able to fight for the rights of children in Jefferson without the background and the knowledge and the expertise of special education. That is an area you cannot pretend to have. You can't. You can't just walk the walk without it, and it makes me unique. I'm a very rare elementary school principal right now. Not many principals have a background in special education. And that I pride myself on that. That's a huge, huge thing that is impacting your district that I have the credentials to fight and support. Fight sounds aggressive. Support. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you like it. Okay. Um, so I just, that's, that's my why. Um, and I, I live here. Um, I'm passionate about being here. Public education, regardless of where my current kids go to school, the community and all of you and all of the staff in this district need to know. And I know there's plenty of staff and I've heard it so much. Amy, that's not a big deal. We have so many teachers that send their kids to different schools and da da da. It is warranted. I'm glad the question was asked. I'm glad you got to hear my story, my family's story, and I appreciate the respect and hopefully my candid response of being open and honest. Um, and yes, I didn't have to share that. I wanted to. It's really important and it needs to be heard. Um, that does not take away from my passion for this district of why I have knocked on your door twice now to be here. I'm very passionate about helping and being a part of the Jefferson success long term. <laughs> yes. Um, well, thank you again for your interest in Jefferson schools and the children that we serve. We will be discussing our final interviews as soon as this one is completed. Okay. Um, we hope to be ready to select our next awesome. Thank you very, very much for your time. I appreciate it very much. I'm going to come over and say thank you one more time. Thank you, thank you so very much. I appreciate you. Thank you for having me this evening. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you all of you for coming this evening. I appreciate you being here. I know it's been a long at least. I thought you were all going out to dinner. Okay, Gordon. Um, and audience, we're going to take about a 10 minute recess and then we'll be really great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank
I do know that. No, I just you know what? You don't really want to know. You got kids. You got kids. And I know you That's important. But I
So in front of some of you, you have the community comments. Uh, Tom has some of them. I think I'm going to read through those. We're not going to read them out loud. We're just going to read them. Okay. This is community feedback. No, I did not. Okay. Tom, after you get done with one, will you, will you I'm good. No, I'll hand it to you and I'll hand it around as well. Oh, yeah. Okay. There we go. Thank you. I had no not che- it's on a test. I'm not cheating. I to this point in his career. He's taken all the steps to become a superintendent. This is his obvious career path. His goal was to be a superintendent. Um, his financial background, his background in finance is impressive. Um, his leadership style seems to be one that we haven't seen before. I think it would be a, a change. Um, and that's a catch-22. It could get us caught up in a, in a learning curve that we can't afford. But it could also be welcomed in and respected. That, that's my thought. Um, on this Amy G, um, I really like the word healer that she used. I think the district is in a position that needs healing in a lot of areas. Um, it's impressive that she took two schools and turned them around in one year. 
that's no task, no small task. That's impressive to me. Um, what sticks out the most to me is the special education background. The elephant in the room is the struggle with the ISD, right? Um, in my opinion, that that gap is going to close quickly with her. Um, and, and those are my strong points on all three. So add to it. Okay. Yep, go I think Dr. Cost had a great interview. Her experience, like you said, is um, is evident. She looks like she would walk right in this building and probably be able to lead and um, without any questions. Uh, I think timeline would be my biggest question with her. Uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Seam Whitman, Whitman, I think that the way he sounds like his uh, leadership roles it's something that I think that I think it would be more of a comfort level other than an interview and more in person. I think his his style would be embraced, um, albeit uh, maybe off, right off the bat it'd be different. Um, Amy G, uh, track record winner. Uh, I just think that she'd bridge every single gap without any questions. I don't think there'd be any hiccups. I think it'd be seamless. Uh, this uh, ISD um, relationship, I believe it has the best opportunity to be mended at the fastest amount of time with the most support. Um, them are my strong suits on that one. If I could comment, I don't know if this is even a possibility, but I do feel all the candidates are very strong and I wonder if it's is even a possibility to not make this decision tonight. You think about it and do it at the next meeting. I respectfully I I, I I feel we should make the decision this evening out of our recommendation from our our leadership team or coach. You run some risks if you don't move fairly quickly. Your candidates begin to wonder how serious are you? Uh, I right. think in your case, I don't think any of the three is aggressively pursuing other positions at this point. So it's not like you're competing. It's just they're so closely very strong candidates. I just, you know, go through these I understand. plans and look through the notes. That's just my opinion. Because I know last time we made a quick decision and we did not go very well. I would hate for, I don't think we could go wrong with any of those candidates tonight and last night, but just a thought. You know. I'll take it into consideration. If we can't come to the consensus, then we'll have to visit that for sure. Um, uh, I'm still on here. Yeah, absolutely. We still sure. have plenty of time to chit chat. It's only 8.30. My bedtime's not for 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> plenty of time. Jackie, you want to feel Um, I really enjoyed the depth of knowledge that Dr. Cost had her experience um, throughout her career. Um, I, I agree that it would be an easy transition for her to walk in here, you know, what do we call it, turnkey, and do the job. Um, Dr. Whiteman, um, so intelligent has such a diverse background with all of the things that he's done. Um, I liked his, how he, he wanted to celebrate successes, even the small ones. And I think that uh, there's not enough of that. I think that um, it's so easy to focus on what we've been through and the difficulties we've had. So I, that really resonated. Um, I loved that Mrs. G said heal as well. Um, it really, it's a deep wound that we are trying to um, fix right now. And this is a really difficult decision and so many eyes on it. Um, but I think that that was a really good way to frame what we need to do. We need to heal. I love that she wanted to start early. I think that that was um, 
I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't expecting to see that. Like, I'm ready to leave now and come because I want to see what you guys are doing with our body in the classroom. And I, I really, I like that. Um, and I do agree that her depth and breadth of knowledge about special education, the processes, the um, laws and terminology that um, we don't have as good of a handle on would be a huge asset. I have a, I like the fact that she can start early too, but I also have a concern that the current school can live with half her food. Like oh, I think there, that's amazing. She's there to run the place and they can live without her at her early. I think that. Go ahead and go. I look at that as like one man's life, <coughs> another man's game. Well, I look at that as her, her share of leadership. Like if she's prepared that many leaders in her building to leave it without her. And that's a way. That's a good thing. And that's how, I, that's how I interpret it. Yeah. <coughs> the, the, in my experience, if you have brought your team to a place where they can function without you, that's a good thing because that means that succession planning is already being realized. And that's something that I think should be in any place. You should be able to pluck any one person out because the job is not the person. The job is the team. Well, and also, I don't want to be caught in her interview. She, she doesn't plan to return to that district in the fall. So she's, I think, been preparing them for her exit. Because whether she gets this job or not, her, her plans aren't to return that. So that, that could speak to why she is so comfortable and leaving quickly. Mm -hmm. that, that's my interpretation. I did like Ms. Cross. She came from a district of 14,000 kids. She it would be walk in the park, one out of walk in the park, much easier to run a district our size. Yeah. Seven times smaller. I guess, um, I mean, all the candidates were great. <coughs> did excellent at the interviews. Um, and this is very challenging. Um, but I think with Dr. Cause, my concern is the same thing as time. How long is she, would she be here? That is a big one, and that was a question from the public as well. Um, I also think my concern with her is coming from a 14,000 student population, <clears throat> she had other staff assisting. A lot of support. A lot of support. And that is one thing we don't have. And that is where, you know, my concern is with her. Uh, but I mean, she's very educated, knows her stuff. Could she come in and just boom, hit the ground running like you said? Yes. Um, Mr. Whitman, um, as well, is very educated. He you know he's got special education as well in his background. The finances is huge. Um, and then Amy, I mean, just Mrs. G, um, the energy. That is something that I'm, I'm, I'm seeing between all of them. I mean, I think they all have an, ener an energy of their own, but the energy giving from both of her interviews is quite great. And yes, she can talk. Well, you can see the wheels never stop turning. I, that's <laughs> why I, I've noticed. And I think we're, you know, we're in a point that that's something, you know, and the healing part, that was huge because we have gone through so much the past two years. And that's, <coughs> that's my thoughts. Okay. Um, actually, I'll be honest. I thought all three interviews were great. They were. They were. And uh, I think the way I see it is each one of them has brought a specific skill set, in my humble opinion. I think that's what we're going to have to probably focus on. Because if you think about it, Dr. Cross does bring the experience. I think I'll keep saying it. She brings the experience, okay? Um, <clears throat> it's been proven. So you're right, it is a plug and play. Um, with that being said, uh, okay, I've heard a couple of people say Whitman. Whitman. Is it Whitman? Which one is Whitman? Whitman. I think Whitman. Mr. Whitman, he also brings what I would call a, uh, <clears throat> a 
a uniqueness to him. I think he engages very, very good, honestly, with, with everybody. And I found that to be very attractive when it comes to that because we need to touch people like that. But I thought he's brought, brought a big business side to it too. My own thing, he's pretty keen on that. And uh, yeah, I, I like that. And then third one, this is G. We all know it's, it is a special ed. And right now, I, I think what we're going to try and end up doing is trying to figure out which is which is more important in our school system. Okay. And I will say this, we all agree it's the kids, you know, staff, obviously teaching to get it, but kids are the most important. So um, it's still tough, to be honest with you. Um, and that's where we're at right now. But, you know, like, when you say he's bringing a separate skill set, and I don't want to get lost with Miss G on special education because it, I agree. Is, it is a strong suit, but I, I'm looking at the whole. Mm -hmm. And when she said, what really resonated with me was when we were talking about the coaches being in the school. And I know all of our coaches aren't staff members, and that's not, you know, you can't have every coach in the school, but um, to get the coaches involved like that on the discipline level, um, to change everything. That was huge. I did. I, I, I like that. Um, I just, I, I feel like there's more of a, a package there. And that's, that's my opinion. I felt like Mr. Whiten is very well rounded. Yeah, he's on. a good package. Yeah. Top to bottom. And he talked, you know, I've been a proponent of the risk, you know, of a, of a future plan to keep teachers here and work on the teacher situation. He had that going. And he was a Division One athlete. He's very, knows all about athletics also. He didn't get into a whole lot of detail on athletics. You know, and then the chain of command concept. You know, we all know where that. We need that. You know, he touched on a lot of broad spectrum. You know, I think they were very comparable the two Amy's experience being a D1 athlete, a successful yeah. one. A they were all, with all candidates were athletes. And yeah, all yeah, 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 yeah. That's that was That's a good. Fun. It's a good problem to have. Like they all three want to be. <laughs> yeah. Peter, it's all your fault. That's what I was, was going to say too. Is you know, I've been through two other of these, which is crazy. Oh, um, we know. Yeah. <laughs> Please leave. <laughs> um, this, this is, this is the hardest I've seen it. I mean, Definitely. challenging because we've gone through more the past couple of years. This district has, I mean, hit rock bottom so hard. You know, it's, it's just this is tough, very tough. Mr. Bedrow, any comments? <clears throat> Yeah, I've just been listening to everybody else. Um, Dr. Cost, I think if we, as, as Corey was alluding to, for the last, well, since COVID, actually, we've been, we've had changes we've never had to address before. And then with the superintendent's problem and other problems, we've had a rough couple of years. We haven't been stable. We've had interim superintendents. Which were good, but we yeah. we had no oh, stability. Oh, basically, five Thank in a row. You. And it's, <coughs> and interim oh. financial oh, officer. We we have no stability. I'm looking at this, in my opinion, to get stable as quick as possible. Uh, it would be Dr. Cost, in, in my opinion, because of her experience, because of her the, the number of years she had superintendent with all of her experience that she had in the resume, with some of the stuff considering what the board from her last school said and stuff. And I'm also considering the other things that have come to us also, but with her, I feel if we want to get stabilized as quick as possible and try to get on it, I think she would be the one. But as all of you said, all these three candidates are good. Great. Uh, Dr. Whitman, Whiteman, <laughs> we can I mean, he's, he, he, he's very presentable. He's a good communicator. He's, at least in my opinion, he's very knowledgeable. Uh, and he seems, seems to be very well organized. I think he, he would make a good superintendent. He's got a good background. Um, and I think naturally he's got to grow like any non experienced superintendent would have to grow a little bit. But I would have no. I, I really don't wouldn't have a problem with him either. And Amy G, 
once again, a lot of good experience. And as you just said, even though in many of our opinions, we want this ISD thing addressed and we want to address fast, we can't go just with that. We've got to look at the whole picture. I think I think she would be excellent and she would be able to solve the problem within a year and stuff. <clears throat> uh, or maybe her and, her and the ISD superintendent go to use the, the floor mats and wrestle. I don't know. She is very good. But I mean, all of it, and, and like Corey said, it's so hard. And you've got to look at the, their individual things. What would be the best for right now in the next three to five years? What would be the best for us? Right, can I add one quick thing? Yeah. Uh, wise, wise man once said one time that not everybody was born a superintendent. They all had to be a superintendent one time, the first time. Yep. They all did, whether they were, they all had to start out and be a superintendent for the first time. Yeah. And the, the experience, I'm not caught up on that. I don't think that experience is, is the end all be all for us. And I can humble you. Yeah. I agree with you a thousand percent on all their struggles. Yeah. And my only point on what I said <laughs> with Dr. Cost was if we want to, Try to get stabilized as quick as possible. Yeah. From looking at everything, I believe she would be the one to do that because she's had it. And I'm not saying I'm not saying that Doctor. Oh, jeez, white, white, white man, man. <laughs> or Mrs. G. 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 See now you guys are really <laughs> All right. When, anyway, you know they wouldn't surpass her in a year. Oh, 100%. Yeah, I, I, I don't have a crystal ball. No, oh, no, I can go with what I've got, and it's just my opinion. I would honestly, I would support any whatever the board majority wants. I would support 100. That says a lot. These are yeah, all good good people. <laughs> I think Dr. Whiteman was the most well around. My opinion, this I try to, you know, I got the most notes on him. He said the most different things of any candidate. He touched more bases, and then I just he was a, appeared to be. He's a leader. I like him. Uh, in my opinion, I thought it. I like him. I do, and I can probably support that. But I, the, I felt more of a full picture with Amy G. Um, I felt she was more relatable. I thought that the relationship building piece would come quicker with her. Again, that's. That's me, that's my opinion. Um, I, I connected, I felt like she connected with the board um, more personal. It was more like a conversation with her than it was the other two. Uh, this was supposed to be like a conversation. It felt that way with her. I didn't feel that with the other two as much in my opinion. I'm like a tad bit of distance in that. I think a superintendent can't be best friend with everybody. You know, gotta have a tad, when you're a boss, I think many of us, but not all of us have been bosses. You know, it's, if you're too close to your workers or your best friend with them, it's difficult. The difficult times or difficult issues and situations are that much harder. So you got to have a, just not a big wall, just a tiny. You can, so a tiny, tiny. That, that don't apply to all all business. That does not apply to all business. Well, we've had there are here. some good bosses and leaders that will interact with their people, rather regardless of where they act here and watch. So do you have a good relationship, uh, an open relationship with our last superintendent? I'm asking, it's just a quick question. Our one. permanent one. <laughs> Our permanent one that was here prior. Did you have a great relationship with it or was there a big wall? Was the wall huge? Okay, um, it's just a legit question. Sure, that was a good size okay. wall. Okay, so it was a good size wall. That, that's that's proof that that, that, that system can right. work. Right, but I mean, yeah. I guess. In our past, we've had to be a happy medium. It's got to be a happy yes. medium. Yes. Since I, I can see where Tom's coming from is, you know, someone in the crowd started off as a kindergarten teacher, became a principal, came in and from superintendent. When that person jumped into those positions, even though they started as a teacher and they were friends with everybody, when they go into that principal position, you can't always be friends with everybody. There's always going to have, you're going to have some kind of different challenges, accountability, and you're going to hold people and you're going to 
Some people may be upset. So some of those friends as you co-workers, you know, they will have disagreements. So I mean, I'm just trying to say I see where both both parties are. So that having that little wall and is Absolutely. makes sense, but so I I thing. still feel I don't think that there's a difference between being best friends with your colleagues, your subordinates, um, and building solid relationships that include both professional and personal. It doesn't have to be best friends or wall well, I think that sure. there is a, there's there is that happy medium you can have a good working relationship where somebody who does your evaluation can know about your personal life because that is what you bring every day and if you can't bring all of your personal that people know you and can support you in that, then it's never going to be a good environment for you. Yeah, that's a good point. Also, just from an HR standpoint, from an HR background, um, the most successful supervisors that I work with on a daily basis, who manage anywhere from 500 to 3,000 people, can walk that assembly line and say, how's Joey doing? I heard he was sick. Uh, they build that relationship and it almost feels personal. They have a wall, the supervisor does. You just, if they're so good at their job, you don't know the wall is there. So that's the vibe I get from Amy. Like, I'm going to know about your family, I'm going to know about your kids, but I'm going to also have these direct conversations when they have to happen. I like when she says courageous conversations. I love that. She, she's going to have them. I think um, that's the vibe I get that no conversations are going to be too uncomfortable for her to have. Um, but on, on the flip side of that, I, I think that Dr. Whiteman would have the same conversations. I agree. I think he would be able to communicate the same way. I don't know if he would be as relatable at first. That, that was my flag there. I think it's going to be a, a, a little bit more of a learning curve for the relationship piece. But I said they're both very good. It's a good problem to have talking about <laughs> qualities for right. three candidates. I think two, of, in my opinion, I think two have stood out the most with all three of us. I mean, that's my at least listening to everybody. I think we've had two that are standing out above and beyond every. Um, all of it. Yeah, Amy G and Dr. White and I might talk to in that order. I think, I think we, and am I, in, am I in that exact order? Same. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Can switch it up at our, Yeah. Corey. Okay. Yeah. Same. Same. And Tom? No particular order. But no yeah. particular order, but same top two. Okay, well, we're the one. Hmm? <laughs> no, <just> <laughs> I feel we've all gotten our strong points out. Mm -hmm. our, um, we've even <coughs> tossed in a couple of negatives or uh, maybe possible weaknesses, not what you call negative, but weaknesses. I so I want to just throw a scenario out there for you guys. Um, since I've been on the board, the biggest complaint from the, not me, I won't say the biggest, one of the biggest complaints from staff and community and even board members has been communication and transparency. And I found out about this and I, I didn't even know your school had that. And I can't believe this happened and you're just now telling me. Good or bad, ugly, whatever it may be. Um, if we put Amy G in that position, I feel that our marketing is gonna go through the roof. She's going to sell our story like no other. I don't, I'm not saying that Dr. Whiteman won't do that. I just feel that her passion and, and when I'm watching her speak and the wheels are turning, like. She was coming up with ideas as she was sitting there that I would do this. Or I think we need that. We've talked before. Shane's brought it up. How many people know that we have like a state championship in robotics? You know, people took their kids out of the district for robotics, and we have a state championship team. 
things like that should be marketed, right? We should be celebrating the, not only the big, but the, but the small stuff. But when something bad happens, we've been down that road a lot in the last two years. We have to be willing to communicate that as well. Mm -hmm. And we have to do it with empathy, and we have to do it quickly. And uh, in my opinion, that's what we need to do with Andy G. I feel like Dr. Whiten has more experience than her, and more broader knowledge, has a financial background, lots of negotiations. Um, he's been a part of the facilities committee at his school also. Yeah, that's a good point. He, he's, I think he's got more experience. Different experience. Yeah. yeah. I mean, obviously, marketing is a big deal. It's, it's great too. Um, I'm, I'm just like the behind this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's just one one story. So. I feel like I heard Mrs. G say something about just going through a bond issue. Mm -hmm. Okay, so she. Yeah, right. <laughs> God bless them. As you know, like echoes <coughs> the number as well. So again, thank you. Um, but you know, she's got the experience. So I'm looking at our criteria that we put Thank you. in <laughs> in our um, job posting for the profile. The, the profile, the superintendent of schools job posting and profile. Um, and I would, do you guys have? Do you guys want to? I have. I can pass it around if you Just guys. Read it. Okay, so demonstrates the highest standards of integrity and professional ethics. Both of them check that box. A proven and experienced leader in an educational setting. A thoughtful communicator who listens and seeks understanding. We're putting me over uh, soon just for the simple fact that. I think her communication skills are better. The initial, the initial. I agree. Yeah. Right. Um, knowledgeable in school finance, budgeting, and funding opportunities. I think um, that yeah, it's hard to argue with uh, scenes. Yeah. Right. Uh, uh, he's got that. Uh, <clears throat> hard to argue that statement. Mm -hmm. An engaged and approachable leader who will be a solid presence in the community. I think Amy G has that. She is a community member. Yeah, that's she she can't deny her. Right. Community yeah, member. But we could, might think they yeah. the other candidates yeah. move here. Yes, we absolutely. Could. Yeah. Could, but I'm saying it checks the box right now. Yes. She checks that box right now. She's in the community. That's what I was going by. I don't know. That, that job is. No, I'm, no, I'm not going to argue with it. No, we're not arguing. We're no, no that, that, he's, he's correct. She, oh, okay. she checks the box today. today. Right. That's, that's all right. right. If he was hired for Dr. Cost, they would check it tomorrow. That, yes. That's all I'm saying. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but I think we need to look also at the engaged and approachable. And I think, what are you bringing them with you from home? Um, I, I agree. I think that Amy will be more engaged and approachable. Just, I just, my mom heart. <laughs> I'm invoking the mom heart. Um, I feel like I would be more comfortable speaking with Mrs. G. Not that Dr. Whiteman couldn't answer all of my questions. Couldn't. You know, explain whatever I needed explained. But my level of comfort would be with Mrs. G. And maybe that's just because I'm a mom and she's a mom. And I think my look on that, too, and not trying to drag this on, but like she said, she's been here for two years. She's heard the ups and downs and everything and coming from. And she still wants to come here. That's 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 huge. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. 
Um, an inspiring supporter who works alongside staff. And I think that it's it, and, and it seems like they both have that connection with their staff. Of course, you know, we're hearing from their point of view. Mm -hmm. So well and the and the and the recommendation letters. Do we, anybody need to go through those? Yeah. Okay. The next one's actually pretty, pretty good touch point in there. Experience and effective strategies to re retain students and staff. This one was huge. She just now uh, referenced. Yeah, that she has experience. At risk school, yeah, risk school, school and had the lowest turnover. Yeah. I know he's been brought up right out of the gate and how to get teachers. No one else brought that up. And I've been proponent of that since I joined this board. The recruiting at the college yeah. level, recruiting yeah. at the college level, and the student teachers, and all that here, you know, retain them mm -hmm. to get teachers for the future. We got five or six more retiring this year. Well, and I think that uh, we're already, as a district, already working towards that. We've got our Teachers of Tomorrow program that we are partnering with the state of Michigan with, and. Um, the tuition reimbursement. So, I mean, I think that that would be a, a definite way to. Yeah. 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 As long as the state keeps. But I think that, yeah, it's a really good. He brought that up and nobody else did. Good point. All right, next. Um, an effective, advocate. an effective advocate for children with special needs as well as the staff who serve them. I just wanted to know what I was going to say. Yeah. 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 It's a no brainer now. Yeah. And I think um, what really resonated with me coming from the special ed background, she also referenced that it, the effect that inclusion can have if not done correctly on the general education students and i think that that is something that um, falls to the wayside unfortunately and it feels bad talking about The, these these students are all being done a disservice if we're not giving them all of their tools. And I think not only can she come up with the tools, she can bring them in because she can work with the ISD and tell them exactly what we need. I agree. All right. Um, a record of advocacy for teaching and learning diverse and rigorous content offerings, and systemic implementation of curricula. I think that Dr. Whiteman was, uh, he spoke about the process for adopting curriculum and professional development and putting that on the calendar. And that's, um, that's definitely something that is dear to my heart because when we go through and adopt new curriculum and then we have another new curriculum and this initiative and then I'm, and I'm not speaking about Jefferson I work somewhere else um, it can be very difficult yeah but that's not a subject we touched on with her this evening so well, that I, could be part of it. But it's not fair to say it's, uh, I don't hear what you said. It's not really fair to say he has the leg up on it because you can ask her a pertinent question. She could have volunteered it though. Yeah, yeah, since she, we had she had probably saw the live show yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she had a little advantage. <laughs> I don't know. Can you have an advantage about it? No. No. That was just fair. A humble developer of themselves and a cultivator of talent in others. I'm going to say, he blew out of the water. 
that she can leave the current school and they can run themselves. That's that's that tells you a lot. And willing to take us there to prove it. So it's it's like and she's not can back it up. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> I think he had some of those qualities too. Oh, absolutely. No. There's there's yeah. no doubt about that. Okay. Um oh, I will touch on this. Everybody's doctors except for Mrs. G, but she wants to do that. Yeah. I don't know what, like, no, I'm, I'm already over school. All right. <laughs> zero I know. I it. It's awesome. All right. Um, someone who honors and respects the rich history of Jefferson schools. I mean, they both, they both, they both spoke very highly. Oh, correct. Yeah. Yeah. She has a keen knowledge of the Huron Lake guys coming from Riverview. Correct. I'll give you that. She's uh, very familiar with who, who's in our school systems, with schools, and uh, you know, which is he? Kind of water falter for the same very simple point. <laughs> I like the fact I like the casual comment. Oh, I know where you're going to be on. I will say this: I did, I did convey to her that I thought it was very positive for her expression, and I thought that was awesome. So, um, um, me. Um, but you know, I think we're, we're just going through the motions. I think we should put it to them. That's the right I got one more. Hold on, I got one more. We'll call it right here. A leader who is prepared to make a long term commitment to Jefferson schools. And Did I think say she wanted to give the diplomas to her two daughters. Yeah, but and, but I think uh, Jefferson said the same thing. Like he's, I get it. I mean, they both yeah, have to check, they check the box for no right. That's I would have yeah, to say that would be an equal cool commitment. I, I like that. I'm, I did have a concern there. Like two other candidates were very strong about getting input from our people and learning as much as they could before they made decisions. And she was already making decisions why she was sitting about the 12% and about what happened with our fifth grade. She was already making assumptions and talking about things happening at our school right out of the gate in the interview. And she doesn't, she didn't even. I think she was asking Talking. the question as if there was a plan and it was it was more of a question like for instance with this subject that's what i got out of it correct me if i'm wrong i, then I, I got the impression when i thought she was asking answer. she asked a lot more thorough questions than the other two candidates she asked some of her statements that. were offended sorry some of her statements were offended because she didn't know the whole story and the other two candidates didn't do that just say i mean obviously Whoever we nominate, we want them to get as much input as possible in their decisions. And when she made statements right out of the gate like that about decisions she kind of wanted. She I, I'm going to find it personally, I think it's going to be impossible for her to stop coming out and tell a lot of the experienced personnel and staff that we have here that it's going to be like she's going to get a lot of input. And we got, and, and that's why I'm actually, I'll say this straight, this striking cost up with the experience earlier because. We have experienced staff here. They've been doing it. They have been doing it. Our staff has been doing it for many, right. well, many years. Agree. That's why I was okay, So it's not like we need somebody to come in and say, hey, we're do this. They've already been doing it. So you brought We need a leader to come in and say, okay, what do we need to do? And I'm willing to go ahead and take that. The, the fifth grade comment, the comment about moving the fifth grade. So what I, what I heard was that she had heard that it was not communicated from the staff clearly to the school, to the middle school, or the decision was made without input. I don't think that, and I didn't hear her put her personal opinion in there. I, please. She had said, and I'm trying to remember the exact. Exact comment, but she, Play back. <laughs> she she had said some something to the effect that she wanted to know who had done that, and I wouldn't do it that way, or something like. And I'm not I'm not clear. I just remember it saying right. that's all. 
I think that there was a comment made by um, some of the educators at the middle school that was said that what was happening, and it just showed up on their desk as what well, the comment was. Well, we'll see when we get it back. Maybe she did say that she wouldn't have done it that way, but I believe she would have got all her input. She said she would have got the input on the, from the community. But I do, for some reason. I so feel like she, she said she would have got the communication was I'm uneasy with that being brought up in your interview. We've all interviewed your child, so we would have talked about how the company was ran in our interview. But, but I at, think at Siemens or DTE, we want to say, hey, why I'm getting interviewed for a job. Oh, you know what? You guys probably should have did this instead or this instead or this instead. Yeah, but there are yeah. interviewers that do that. Tom. There are people that do that. Well, well, they're 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 well, regardless, you're running somebody that run the company, you want their opinion on how maybe they would have. Well, after you're a thought process. So, regardless, um, I from what I heard, and, and like I said, it, this is just me, I feel like what she was saying was, I heard this, I don't know the whole story. I believe she verbalized that she doesn't know how it happened, but if it would have been something that she was doing, it would have been done like this. So, I mean, and I'm not discounting how you heard it because right. we we all have the lens that we view things through. Sure. But I didn't, I didn't feel that way when she said it. Well, I'll, I'll just touch on that a little bit because when you open up an interview to an informal, meet and greet before an informal second round interview, they're probably going to bring feedback from that informal piece of the meet and greet to the interview. That's gonna happen if you're meeting the staff for the first time and they're giving you concerns. I and did it, but the other two candidates did not. Which could that. mean a couple things. <laughs> and they probably met more people than she did. They could have, yeah. You know, and the twelve percent things kind of, you know, you need some more homework there before you start making mistakes, stuff like that. What twelve percent? I totally don't. The fundamental our ratio. Oh. Fifteen down she, to twelve. Yeah. Yeah. She basically was already saying we should spend the money. We shouldn't have eighteen percent. We need to get down to twelve. And there's a whole bunch of input. No, you absolutely. Have to get before you start making statements like you that. You know, the uniqueness to all that time is. She can say all she wants. She still got to get in front of seven of us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I get it, but I, I just, I've been my own people. I just kind of need. Mean. She's still living. I, I, whatever opinion she has, I think that the superintendent's right. The superintendent, whatever, whoever we choose, is going to do that. They're going to upset us. They're going to offend us. They're going to do that. All right? Problem is, is how are seven of us going to react to it? That's it. Right. I'm just wrong. Well, I, don't, I okay. just don't think somebody should say that. Yeah. We respect that. I, so I was. I, 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 I see there are it. others who are saying we're okay with it. Yeah. And see, the, like, um, I think I've made the comment probably a times before that you got to spend money to make money. Right. Hey, Keep in mind, see. at the beginning of her interview, when she started her 90 day plan, she said, I'm going to present to you today like I've already been hired as a superintendent. So, I mean, that, <laughs> that's a big piece. So, I don't know if we're going to come to a consensus, but. <laughs> I can put it up for a vote. Just looking at the faces, I think you. Okay, so I'll start this off. I recommend A and B. Mr. Fryer? You want me to make my recommendation, yes. or if I agree or don't agree with you? You can make a recommendation. I'd like to recommend Dr. White. Mr. McLaughlin. Uh, Mrs. G. Mr. Foster. Uh, Amy G. Mrs. Lancaster. Amy G. Mr. Bedro. Dr. Whiteman. Can I leave? And Mr. Bergar. <coughs> Mrs. G. Okay. That gives me a, a, a more clear picture. Um, you have. So, my next question would be if we nominate, if we make a motion, 
it's important to me to try to get things like this. If we vote tonight, I would want a 7 0. I know it's, I can't guarantee that, but it's important to me. Um, it sends a message to our next leader that we're behind you, we support you, we have your back. I agree with that or no, I think that's. Yeah, I, 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 I don't necessarily agree with how you just said that, but I understand what you meant. Yeah. However, going back as to what I said earlier, regardless of who my first candidate was, I will support 100% whoever the superintendent is. Noted. All of these people are good. Noted. Just one, you know, in my opinion, one has a little <clears throat> bit more better for what I perceive our problems are for the next couple of years. That's all. Okay. It's very similar to the last one. Well, I'd like to make my opinion too. But Ron, you made a comment earlier. Right? You're looking at our faces, and he said, "Well, I see where you're going." You made that comment. Did you not say it? I can see where yes. some of you guys are going. Have you not had your experience in boards previous to that, sir? Is anyone looking at your face with, and on the board and making that comment? I don't think that's kind of doesn't sit well with me. Should be reading us like that and making a comment. Did they do that to you during the board? I, when you I said to him, "I think." He, I would slightly, I think we'll have the consensus, I believe is what I said. I took it just okay, like Tom said. Yeah. We're going to go back to the vote. Okay. So, are you guys comfortable with me making a motion? Sure. I'll hold you to make sure we're comfortable with making a motion. Because if I don't have consensus, I'm making a motion at this point. Right? So, are you comfortable with me making a motion? Can I, can I give a clarification on what you just said? Yeah, are you comfortable with you making a motion to offer the position and enter into negotiations with Amy? But I, I thought you just said if you don't get a total consensus, you can't do it. And I don't understand that. No, I can That's do. why I asked for clarification. No, I can do it. I'm asking you, if I don't, if you all don't want me to go up for a vote tonight, you know, if I don't let, know. let me know. Yeah. Oh, all right. That's okay. You're comfortable voting tonight. Yeah. You're comfortable voting yes. tonight. Yes. 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 No. no. Okay. So we can vote tonight. We are six to one on that. So just give me a minute to write a motion. <coughs> There's a boiler place. <laughs> Which one? Five, your hand. What is your name? What is your name? So when it says negotiations, that means the contract. So Yeah, no, I'm just writing down so I can take a little call. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> what are you talking about? All right, so moving on, we're going to go into subject C selection of superintendent. I need a motion to select and enter into negotiations with AG for superintendent at Jefferson School. So moved. Support, Mr. Foster. Supported by Mr. Pajaro. <laughs> and I'll need a roll call. That's you. Yes, that is me. Mr. Bedra. Yes. Mr. Pajaro. Yes. Mr. Foster. Yes. Mr. Fryer. No. My vote is yes. 
Mr. McLaughlin? Yes. And Mr. Stump? Yes. Motion carries 6 1. And that for you may consider a second motion uh, to agree to fully support your new superintendent. Oh, Sometimes do you, do you really think that's necessary? Well, it sends a good statement if you're not unanimous in your decision to be unanimous in agreeing to support. Because I think that's what I heard you say. But you don't have to. Yeah, I mean, I. I and can we discuss this? Actually, someone should make a motion first before you discuss it. Call. If you're going to, and you don't need to. Okay. I'm choosing not to. There you go. Uh, so moving on to subject B approval of labor for children at so elementary. <laughs> The labor cost for the children at Soul Elementary. I'm going to read the whole thing. Motion to approve the labor for the children at Soul Elementary and to accept a bid from Monroe Plumbing and Heating Company in the amount of $296,680. So moved. Support. Okay. Sorry, I'm sorry. We're all supporting. Who will come up? Lane. This is Lancaster. Lancaster support. Any discussion? Here you go. All in favor? Yes. 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 Opposed. Motion carries seven zero. Oral communication. Citizens. I don't have any. Board. Closing comments. Oh. Hey, Amy G's our new leader. Uh, welcome her to the district. Um, I think we're gonna. This gonna be a home run. Listen, guys, we're in the bottom of the night. Bases were loaded. Two outs. She came up the bat. So, there's my sports man for Miller. You're welcome. I'm all for the sports, girl. But they have to be able to read. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I have to say it. I there's, I actually, there's a meme that says, um, you don't like baseball? <coughs> That's okay. It's a smart person game. That's or it's a girl. game for smart people or something like that. Any closing comments from you, I, I just would say um, it was tough. It's very challenging. Um, you know, everybody has their own opinions, and they should stick by that. And yeah, we should we should respect those as well. Um, and you know, yes, we will have people in the community, staff, and others that may be disappointed in our selection. But you know, it was it's us to make that selection, and you know. Whatever direction we would have went, some people may be happy and some people may not. But we need to make sure we get up on our feet and support that person going further and welcome welcome them to the district, even though they're currently here. Um, but I just that's one thing that I really want to see going forward is really pushing. Um, we got to grow this their nation. Like it was. Absolutely. Well said. Thank you. Mr. Price? I just want well, you know, you know, I we have our differences. I will absolutely be supportive. I would not don't even think of that. I understand. And I want to thank everybody for coming out through this whole process. It's been great that all of you are that interested to come out every night and follow us. That's spectacular. That means you care. It means a lot. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. I appreciate all of you sitting through all of this. Um, I agree with what you said, Corey, that there are going to be people, and I hope that people stop and realize that the people that we love are in this district. I send my kids here every day. And I would never make a decision out of I would never make a decision that would negatively impact this district because it would negatively impact my kids. And I love everybody here. 
that much. Mr. Bizarro. Thank you all for coming out. I want to thank all the board too. Uh, <clears throat> we definitely had to put up with a lot. And uh, each and every one of you, thank you. Um, I can honestly say for myself today, after this, it's, it's time for a fresh start. So we're looking for a uh, new beginnings. And I'm ready. So let's go. Thanks, Mr. Becker. Just thank you for coming out. Uh, I really appreciate the other candidates that didn't make it. And I uh, wish them well for their future careers. And as I think Corey said, and everybody else kind of indicated, it, it, this was a tough one. But all of them, I felt, were, they were all pretty qualified. Each one of them had their own little niches, and it was tough. And I, I didn't, in, <coughs> Peter, I, did, I didn't mean to get upset, but when, when you snow, when you said that, you struck a nerve of something that happened about 30 years ago. No, I was in No. When you're in the horse lunch, really. I was in Buffalo, New York. <laughs> at a meeting. Okay. Of which I was chairing. And that same situation was brought up when we brought up something. And it just Start right or wrong, it, it insults my integrity when someone says something like that because I always will support my leaders. But that's anyhow, that's that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, first and foremost, thank you to the community. Um, you sat through some long nights with us, um, you've given us some valuable um, feedback. Um, we take it all very seriously. I hope the community and the staff knows how much work this Board of Education has put into this decision. Um, we don't take the decision lightly. It's our main job to hire the superintendent. Um, and we put a lot of work in, a lot of long nights. Uh, I welcome Amy to the district. I wish Dr. Cross and Dr. Whiteman the best of luck. Um, and I thank my board. Thank you all for your hard work. Um, and I, I think it's a, it's a home run. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to it. And thank you, Peter. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. 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 Are you about done? Because I want to make a motion. You know, don't worry. I want to make a motion. You're buying dinner now. <laughs> <laughs> motion to move the special board meeting to adjourn. Motion. Support. Lancaster. Who is the support? I take Tom Gandhi. Okay. Oh, okay. We need the special. Let's draw on the draw. Very nice. All in favor? Yes. yes. Opposed? Motion carry 7 0. We are adjourned. Or, okay, just offer if anyone has a binder they don't want to keep, you are welcome to keep them forever and ever. But if you want to recycle them, they'll <laughs> <laughs> actually get reused. <laughs> yeah, and then you might keep it the best thing I've ever seen. Don't want it. Don't throw it away. I'll change it. You're not coming back. Probably not. And, yeah. 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 Yeah.